questions? Okay. Keep on, keep it. All right, Complete Streets Commission take two. Uh, welcome to the Complete Street Commission's July 12th regular commission meeting. This is a hybrid meeting with commission members, city staff, and members of the public participating in accordance with public health guidelines. Uh, I would like to introduce Complete Streets Commission members and city staff present. I'm Chair Jackie Sebrian. Commission members present include Brian Altman, Katie Beruzzi, Sally Cole, Christopher Coleman, and Ross Silverstein. Silverstein? See. Commissioner, abs Commissioner absent include Lizbeth King. City staff present include Kevin Chen. Kevin, would you please provide instructions to the commission and members of the public on how the meeting will proceed? Thank you, Madam Chair. And for those that might have noticed, uh, Patrick is not here tonight. Um, so I'm, I'm playing both the role of Kevin Chen as well as Patrick Palmer. So do you uh, give me some leeway if I mess up or some dead airs in between, try to juggle between between two rows here. Uh, so uh, thanks again, uh, Chair Severian and members of the Complete Streets Commission and, and welcome everyone to the July 12th Complete Streets Commission meeting. Thank you for attending. So let's see, we can skip that one, everyone's here. For members of the public wish to provide public comment for any items on tonight's agenda, after the chair calls for public comment on that item, our virtual attendee may engage the raise hand feature, or if you're calling in from a landline or cell phone, press deny to raise your virtual hand. If you're participating in person, please wait for the chair to call for your name, and then you can step up to the podium and make your comment. And with that, I conclude the instruction and return the meeting back to the chair. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Under reports and announcements, city staff and commission members may communicate general information of interest regarding matters within the jurisdiction of the commission. No commission discussion or action can occur on any of the presented items. Kevin, can you please um, provide reports and announcements? Yes, I can. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, two items that the City Council have taken action since the last meeting that might have interest to you. One is that the City Council adopted the 2023-2024 budget, as well as the capital improvement plan. So some of you have almost, you, you have all received a, an item from myself with a link to the transportation page specifically. So that's a list of projects that we do anticipate to continue to move forward with, with the next fiscal year. Uh, with that, though, there is uh, a, a bit highlight I want to um, talk about briefly is that we do intend to at least go back to the city council again with a list of uh, actionable items uh, for, for their blessing. And some of that, the, most of that list is actually included in your staff report for your work plan tonight, which I will then later on go over as part of the presentation for that item. But just so that you know, that is an item that will be going to the city council in the near future. Uh, second, the city council awarded some funding resources for the Middle Avenue bike, bike lane pilot project. So if you have driven by or rode by um, Middle Avenue, you might have noticed that the pilot bike lane actually went in already, so, um, specifically the two third of the stretch. So we're talking about from a uh, university to Olive. We're still going through some of the permitting process for, uh, for the stretch between El Camino and university. And we're hopeful that that will go in you know, roughly within a month or so, uh, fingers crossed. Yeah, so definitely exciting news. Can I ask um, a quick clarifying question? Did you say University and Arbor? University and Olive. Olive, yes. thank you. So that's the stretch where now there is buffer bike lane on the street, yep. And then uh, slightly deviating to a more exciting news, uh, Cedar Mellon Park used to be a member of the Lee of American Bicycle Friendly Community. Uh, it's kind of national... Uh, organization that's advocating for, for bike facilities. Uh, we are now reapplying to be a member uh, since COVID. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll get in. Uh, with that, I will conclude my announcements. Thank you. Um, Kevin, the article I was telling you about before the meeting, is this an appropriate time? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. So I just wanted to is it all right if I add, a, add a, um, an, a report, not an announcement, but I just wanted to flag for those of you who might've missed it, um, an article, a news article in the Daily Post, uh, Thursday, June 15th, which I thought was of great interest to us. Um, the Los Altos City Council has committed to putting up a physical barrier, such as planter boxes or bollards, 
that would separate bike lanes from cars on San Antonio Road. I'm sure most of us know that San Antonio Road is the major road of Los Altos, and this would be occurring um, all the way from Foothill Expressway to El Camino Real, which is a pretty long stretch. Um, it says, I'll just read it, just finish this up. Uh, the council on Tuesday agreed to accept a $7.3 million grant, which will pay for 80% of the new bike lanes. This is quite possibly the most exciting agenda item that I've come seen come before the council. Vice Mayor Jonathan Weinberg said, council made new bike lanes on San Antonio Road the number one priority in the streets plan approved in October. So I thought it was really interesting to hear about this major development in a neighboring uh, town and also to be aware of how uh, different towns around us are committing to investing in providing safe bike lanes on these major roads. Um, and as, as we are doing, I just, I just wanted to make folks aware. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Cole. Does anybody else have any um, report um, informational things? This, is, this isn't when I do that, right? Under public comment, members of the public may address the Complete Streets Commission on any subject not listed on the agenda. Each speaker may address the commission once under public comment for a limit of three minutes. You are not required to provide your name or city of residence, but it is helpful. The commission cannot act on items not listed on the agenda, and therefore the commission cannot respond to non-agenda issues brought up under public comment other than to provide general information. Kevin, could you please call for general public comment? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. So for those of you that might have just attended to the meeting, uh, just so that you know, if you would like to provide a public comment uh, for, tonight, for, the, for this particular item, uh, please go ahead and engage the raise hand feature if you're participating online, or if you're calling from a landline or cell phone, do press nine to raise your virtual hand. And just for the record, we do have, uh, we don't have any audience in the attendance. So I think I can pass the meeting back to the chair. Thank you. Under regular business, the commission considers recommendations from city staff on policy matters or administrative actions that require commission approval. The first regular business item tonight is accept the complete streets commission minutes for June 14th, 2023. Um, any clarification from the commission before I take public comment? Okay. Kevin, can you call for public comment, please? Okay. Uh, just maybe give the person online a second to see if they want to make a comment. Okay. I think we can um, return to this meeting back to the chair. Thanks. Do I have a motion and a second to accept the minutes? Motion to motion to accept the minutes. I'll second. Okay, all in favor? Okay, great. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, um, Kevin Staff, Kevin Chen, Senior Transportation Engineer, can you please introduce the next item? Uh, Complete Streets Commission 2023-2024 work plan. Yes, I can. Thank you, Madam Chair. So if you can give me a second here, I'm going to pull up the presentation. Okay. Great, I believe all of you can see the beginning of the presentation slides in front of you, am I correct? Great, okay, so good evening everyone. Kevin Chan, Senior Transportation Engineer with the City of Menlo Park. Uh, very excited to bring this item in front of you tonight. Uh, the item tonight is our annual Complete Streets Commission work plan. So this is the 2023-2024 work plan. Uh, this might be a, a, a fairly new item for some of you, so I'll, I'll try my best to go over some of the 
the high level items, of course, at the end of the presentation, feel free to ask any clarifying questions, et cetera. But I'll, I'll try to do my best to, to be comp comprehensive with the, uh, the intention of, of the, the work plan. As you can see from this slide, the agenda tonight, going through some of the objectives, some of the processes that are typically associated with a commission work plan. We're also gonna go over the uh, recently adopted uh, city council priorities. Uh, and then of course, as a result of that, some of the requests and recommendations that are being uh, proposed for our uh, work plan. Uh, the last two slides will be the actions that we're requesting the commission to take tonight. Um, and then also the next steps to get the uh, commission's work plan fully approved. The objective of our commission, as many of you might know, uh, we are a advisory body uh, with the exception of parking removal. The commission does have power to remove par on-street parking spaces, uh, depending on the location within the city and depending on the number, uh, the commission does have the power to do so. Uh, however, generally speaking, our Complete Streets Commission is an advisory body, uh, generally to hear testimonies on projects that are pre being presented um, to the general public as well as the commission. And generally, those recommendations would ultimately be rolled into a final recommendation that goes to the city council for their approval. So as a result of that, our goal is to support the city council's uh, annual work plan. And then here is a, a quote that some of you might have seen in the past. Uh, so I'm not gonna go ahead and, and, and read it out loud. Uh, essentially what goes into a work plan tonight is essentially step number one, where we are gonna take a look at the work plan, uh, a, a draft version of it, if you will. Uh, and after a conversation that we get, we're gonna have tonight, staff will usually go back, modify the work plan if necessary, and then come back again for the, uh, for the commission approval. Our guidelines uh, stipulate that we need to have the city council adopt commission work plans annually prior to September 30th. Uh, that's why we're doing it today, uh, the July meeting with the, the goal of adopting our work plan uh, at the next meeting, August meeting, so hope, in hope of meeting the September 30th deadline. And generally with an adopted work plan, there's a desire from the city council to report out uh, at a recommended rate of twice a year. Generally at those report outs, it's a, a good opportunity for the commission to showcase some of the, the accomplishments, uh, some of the progresses we have made on the work plan specifically. It could be um, you know, a very general update of just what has been done, or it could be a little bit more detail oriented. Generally it's up to the commission on how much F, how much, uh, Detail Kevin, that we want Kevin to can in. I ask, um, in the past, has that been done um, in writing or in a city council meeting or how has that been passed on? We haven't been, so since COVID, I believe we have not yet done a quote unquote update report. Prior to COVID, yes, generally the chair will go to the city council meeting and present. We, in the past, we have prepared presentations or it could be a really quick summary both have been done in the past. So it just depends on uh, the chair at the time or, or whoever is elected to represent a commission at the time, mm -hmm. how they want to proceed with that update. Currently, are other commissions, um, like in 2023, have they been doing this? I believe at least one commission have provided an update. Yes. Okay. Uh, yes. Thank you. Yeah. I might just jump in here. Sorry, Assistant Public Director Hugh Lauch. So the... Um, it's most common lately in the ones that I've seen for them to be done as kind of an informational update with uh, the EQC in particular having done presentation updates. Um, but most of the other commissions that I've seen recently have been doing them as sort of an informational item. And then there are questions from council um, as needed. Um, and that's mostly having to do with agenda space on city council meetings, which is often quite limited. Just to clarify, as an informational item, someone would still get up from the commission, from EQC, for example, at a city council meeting and no. make a presentation? Am I, am I getting that wrong? No, informational items yeah. are one that are just included in the packet as like a staff Included report. in the packet. Like, okay, yeah. that's helpful. And then only Thank if there you, are questions. Thank you, I like your haircut. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, great. Um, so the next couple of slides, we're gonna go into a little bit about the city council's priorities that have been recently adopted. So some of you that might have followed the progress 
of that effort, the city council essentially adopted five top priority items to be proceed for this upcoming year. We have housing, uh, emergency preparedness, climate action, activating downtown, and then also safe streets. So safe streets, obviously, uh, much more um, uh, immediate to our commission here. So as I mentioned earlier, there is an intent to at least go back to the city council with a, a list of more, more actionable items as a result of the priorities. And again, this is a list of bullets that are uh, included in the staff report, but I do want to take a little bit of time just kind of going over them as they, they, they do have some, they do set the framework for typically the type of projects that we would bring forward to the commission for review and, and ultimately recommendation. So the first bullet has to do with essentially just uh, maintaining the existing assets that we have. Uh, so for example, our signing and striping, uh, making sure that they are, are uh, visible uh, as they are very much a, a element of safety, uh, making sure that people know where they're going, the signs are visible, providing the clear direction. So continue to, to make sure that we maintain our existing assets. Uh, and of course, integrate, integrating some of those safety features uh, into regular repaving uh, or other city projects, which we have done, I, I think, um, since I've been with the city, we, we do a pretty good job of, of looking at some of the repaving projects and making sure that we uh, we add any safety features, if could be, for example, the Ravenswood, for example, the, um, the middle field, that, those are the two more recent examples. Uh, the second bullet here, proactively advance the safety by comp completing the Vision Zero action plan. That's also our local safety plan, which is a uh, ongoing effort. And I believe one of our commissioners here is uh, more in tune with that project uh, being on the, uh, the task force. Uh, the third bullet here is essentially a, a very much an ongoing effort since our um, transportation master plan has been adopted, uh, really making sure that we continue to implement the projects that are that are identified in there. And of course, uh, develop, uh, by developing a more connected multimodal network. So, and that actually will, will um, be an influence to, to an item that I, I'm gonna mention a little bit later on for our action plan. Uh, lastly, reviewing and update key transportation policies. Um, and, and this really has to do with some of our more citywide embedded policies. So for example, our transportation analysis guideline. So generally speaking, are more, more, more commonly known as a transportation impact analysis, TIAs, if you um, are in tune with the, the terminologies and acronyms. Uh, the city's TDM ordinance. So TDM generally has to do with measures that we ask Developers, such as uh, commercial building, uh, commercial developers, to to really provide benefits that would uh, encourage people not driving uh, into their site. So, for example, providing bike lockers, providing uh, transit passes, etc. Those type of measures that would encourage alternative travel. We also have a lot of um, requirements within the city that that would likely. Um, be coming forward to the commission as well. So one of them is our parking requirement, um, which, and all of this really rolls into not just a sort of um, a, a more high level safe street conversation, but also a lot of different elements, for example, uh, climate action, which has to do with, you know, some of the projects that we're encouraging developers to build, uh, activating downtown certainly is one that, that has uh, very much a, um, a key component when we're reviewing downtown project development projects. Oops, wrong keyboard. So the, before I go into the next uh, three slides or so, I, I do want to kind of briefly go over the, the structure of the work plan itself. Uh, as some of you might have read through this, the, the work plan, we generally have six items. Uh, the terminology or the verbiage in there are generally focusing on a topic within the city. And again, generally falls under a um, under the verbiage that, that matches the city council's priorities. Those are typically items that the commission can expect to receive from city staff, right? So for example, um, transportation master plan project, the projects that, that you have seen in the past, those are all fit within one of those elements. 
Beyond that, we typically would identify specific actionable items as a sub bullet to those uh, to those bigger bigger items. Generally, we identify them uh, for two reasons. One, if the city council have explicitly directed this commission to take on that task. So in the past, if you remember, we had three items that were specifically directed by the city council. One was to evaluate the current state of the Safe Route to School uh, program, which had been assigned to the Safe Route to School subcommittee that we have. Um, the, the other two items, one was um, the uh, neighborhood traffic calming plan, which the, the commission have subsequently reviewed and provided feedback on, and we're just waiting to bring that item um, to the city council. So really, I just wanted to kind of frame how we typically um, uh, embed our work plan to identify the type of projects that the commission would typically see on a yearly basis. And, in, and, in, and then in addition to that, some of the items that are either driven by the city council or maybe driven by uh, particular commissioners that might be of interest to explore that further beyond the capacity of just coming to the commission. So with that in mind, those the last two items really fits more of that build. So the, the, the second bullet here, identify priority multimodal corridors for prioritization purposes. So that is the one where we have discussed with the commission about essentially identifying some key north, south, east, west corridors for the city, you know, generally in a multimodal characteristic. And uh, the purpose behind having that resource available would be to prioritize future projects. So for example, if we have two projects that are of similar characteristics and we only have the funding source to do one, then perhaps we can use this resource to identify which one to pick uh, over the other. Uh, the, th the third bullet here is a more recent development. Uh, some of you might remember. It's essentially to develop a criteria to address uh, future driveway site distance requests. As many of you know, uh, within the past few months or so, especially with uh, post pandemic, a lot more driving happening. The city have been receiving more requests to evaluate those driveway uh, lack or the request to evaluate driveway site distance. And as a result of that, we have been taking on quite a few more projects than, than I remember even pre COVID. And as a result of that, there has been some conversation about how to move this item forward from a more citywide perspective. And at the last meeting, uh, one of our commissioners have expressed desire to perhaps be, be more involved in the process. And as a result of that, we have identified that here as a key um, a bullet. Uh, sure, yeah. Regarding item number two, um, multimodal implies biking, walking, transit, driving. Is the expectation that we would find these corridors that apply to all of those different modes? Or is it that we would find a biking corridor which might be separate from the transit corridor, which might be separate from the driving corridor? That, that's a great question. I, I would say for now, because this is very much at the beginning phase, so we don't really have a, uh, a framework, so to speak. But I, I think your point is very much well taken because some of our corridors are definitely more concentrated to one use versus other, right? So for example, if you're riding your bike, um, if you're driving, you're probably on Willow Road. Uh, if you're heading you know, towards Belhaven or coming from Belhaven versus if you're on a bike or a pet, perhaps you are more on the you know, new bridge, uh, heading, using the Ringwood Bridge and then using Ringwood and Ravenswood. So there's definitely a, a bit of a, that characteristic and the, 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 um, the Mo use that we'll need to embed into it as well. So certainly recognize that, um, acknowledging that comment that it will be something that really should be, um, uh, you know, hammer out a little bit more in detail. Can I make a follow-up comment on that, Kevin? Um, the way it's written here, identify priority multimodal corridors. Um, I think my read on that is that we sort of know what the priority corridors are for drivers. Mm -hmm. It seems like pretty clear, um, I think, for most people in navigating Menlo Park. And maybe it's less clear what the priority corridors are for walkers and bikers. And if those corridors are set up to support um, you know, the traffic and the usage and 
um, and the safety issues associated with having like a major corridor that is intended for to be used by those types of uh, travelers. Um, but I'm glad it's on here. <laughs> Can I ask one follow up? Sorry, maybe you have a whole slide about this, in which case you should head us off at the pass. Um, no, the next few slides are basically the, the actual verbiage, which is basically attachment okay. A. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So quick comment on or question about the identifying priority multimodal corridors. I know this is something that earlier the TMP subcommittee had talked about a lot. I'm wondering if that's going to be a little bit duplicative of the VZAP. I'm wondering if, because there's going to be a process, right, through that work to identify where the challenges are and and where, where the city should be focusing and prioritizing. And maybe I'm misunderstanding it, but can you clarify, Does, is, is this a little bit obviated by that? Are they? In, in some respect, I would say yes. There definitely will have some synergy between the two efforts with the, uh, the local safety plan. You know, you're, you're looking at more holistic uh, citywide data uh, where the collisions are occurring, what type of collision, you know, where, like, for example, yeah, where is it occurring? So the focus is more on, on this, I, I don't want to say safety, because then that kind of implies the other one is not necessarily looking at that, versus uh, the effort that is more being identified here is probably a bit more of a direct route, uh, a route that is maybe the easiest for someone to use to get across town, north, south, or east, west, and not necessarily looking at... Um, uh, the, I guess the collision rate, et cetera, but there is an opportunity to kind of merge the two together. I think so far from a commission standpoint, there, we don't really have anything that is uh, a, uh, an action for any of the subcommittees to take on. Um, ideal, <clears throat> from a staff perspective, we do intend to bring at, at a, uh, an appropriate time to bring the local safety plan summary to the commission for review and, and recommendation, et cetera. But as far as subcommittees are concerned, there is currently not one to kind of further evaluate, except I believe we have a commissioner that is um, a little bit more following that. Other than that, there's really no, no visible action. Which commissioner? It, um, I'm on Vision Zero. Right. So the, I yeah. Got, uh, yeah, yeah, I was. I, so it's Commissioner Cole, I, I, Vice Chair. I'm Cole. on Vision Zero. I went. I've gone to one meeting. I was about to jump in, um, and um, I agree based on that one meeting with your assessment, Kevin, that the focus uh, was very much on the safety, at least in that meeting, the safety and the collision data and sort of a pain, pain points. Is it? I'm not sure if that's the right word, but um, more concern points, I guess, uh, relative to that type of data. Just this is very initial, but I'd say, Katie, the, the difference to me between that and this is um, um, this is, I think, sort of a bit more macro and a bit more what do what's our vision? What, what do we want these corridors to be and how do we make sure that they're clear and that they're equipped to be those corridors and that they're marketed as, as such and and people get educated as such, um, but they're they're related. And um, I'm going to the second meeting um, tomorrow. And I'll touch base with you after that because um, we can, and Kevin, we can discuss how I can be the, um, you know, whatever I'm looking for here, the link between that work and sitting in on the task force and, and the work of this and this commission, and we can, we can make sure they're all coordinated. You know, I, I'll, I'll find out the kind of communication I can do that's fruitful between like an actual report at the end and now. So I'll just jump in and say quickly, I, I think, Sal, you've, you've got it very much uh, how I would think about this, which is that, um, yeah, the, the, the safety plan, it'll inform everything we do, I hope, uh, at some level, uh, although, uh, like, it can't be all things to all people, uh, <laughs> which is, you know, run a little bit of a risk, and we'll have to do some sort of uh, thinking about what the priorities are. Um, and one of the things that it'll do is really help us think more systemically about safety so a little bit less like chasing the hot spots and a little bit more like making the network safer overall um in in places where you, you may or may not see collisions but that have patterns that are similar to places that do so that's that's it's probably most unique 
kind of feature that it produces for us uh, and, and creates an opportunity for us to pursue certain kinds of funding that we otherwise wouldn't to be able to address some of those issues, which is great. Um, and then this this is more, yeah, kind of stepping up a level and saying, like, given that, given other things we know, how are we sort of prioritizing which things are moving forward and how? Because uh, they're going to be every everything's going to be important. Um, and it's and we're not going to just have an answer like this is the list of important things. So I think it, it's probably important to it, it makes sense to me to separate it a little bit. Kevin, can we turn up Hugh's audio just a bit? I, I'm. I think maybe it could be a little higher or the sorry, I, I can hold the mic closer to my mouth. No problem. Um, yeah. No problem. I heard what you said, but I just was thought that might be helpful. Um, does that make sense, Katie? Commissioner Bruce? It it totally makes sense. I just um it does feel like an input that we want before we identify priorities yes. in middle quarters. Yes, like, I agree. agree. Okay, great. Yeah, hundred percent. Okay. And by the way, I, I don't think there was ever an opportunity prior to this to discussed that I'd been to this meeting. So but there wasn't anything secret about it. It was just that I got asked to the meeting and I went yeah. on behalf of the commission. This is when I was still chair. Yeah, okay. no, um, <clears throat> this was an item that we have came to the commission in the past, knowing that we needed a commissioner to yeah. to, to be part of the task. We, I, I, we asked the commission, I mean, the open, if anyone interested, and I think ultimately uh, Vice Chair Cole yeah. uh, decided to kind of um, dedicate her time to the, to the effort. So I appreciate that. Sure, okay. Yeah. I've got a quick question. What is the actual deliverable? What is the actual deliverable for this? Um, maybe it's the wording, uh, identify priority. What's the actual deliverable um, for this? Uh, we, we, we're it, talking maybe about... it's the wording of it. It's like identify priority for prioritization. Or right. Maybe, what's the actual, is it a map? Is it a list? Is it a, a set of action items? Or It will be more of a map. I, what, what we envision is that staff will take a crack at identifying those maps with uh, what Commissioner uh, Silverstein mentioned in my sort of the, the end user of who, who those corridors are serving. But ultimately, you are correct that the end product is probably going to be a map with, uh, that highlights those key routes, who they are for, um, that type of stuff. Yeah. Okay. Then, then how would this be used in conjunction with the TMP? So in general... The, the TMP has just the list of projects with uh, definitely a level of prioritization. There's tier one, there's tier two, and then each tier has, you know, isolated projects or CDY project, et cetera. This will essentially become another source. Or, or is it just another grouping? Is it just another way of sorting the Ooh, TMP? That, that, that is correct. And yes. If it's, if it's that, it seems like it's, like it's, would be really cool right? yeah, to be able right. to say, okay, What's a um, corridor, right. you know, what's a blah, blah, blah. Right. Just be what's able to dynamically goal? sort the TMP. So, because I, I assume we're going to get to it, but one of our goals is to implement the TMP. Um, so maybe, you know, actually using the TMP this way might, might be a step towards implementation. Yeah. The, the way I see it is, you know, it's, it's another data point. It's another a resource available for us to help identify which project we want to move forward with. So, you know, TMP obviously has kind of its own tier system. This will be one, the local safety plan where um, the uh, the collision rates have been evaluated and identified. So the location uh, of collision rates, you know, those are all elements that we'll look into as we continue to pick projects to move forward with. That's like an overlay. I'm sorry. Right. I, I'm also not entirely familiar with the entire city, but I imagine <laughs> Through this process, we might identify corridors that already exist mm -hmm. outside mm -hmm. of any work needed by the TMP. Mm -hmm. And it's more of a informational process to the community to say, hey, if you're biking from neighborhood A to neighborhood B, these are the best routes. And we can have signage for that. And it's certainly possible that those corridors exist today, independent of any work we have to do. Mm -hmm. I think other ben I'm assuming and I'm hoping that other benefits will will follow and flow from designating the designation of a thing as a priority corridor. That seems to be within like the policy world a good way to cut through some other stuff and prioritize and direct resources toward right and definitely consistent standards around. And yeah, yeah. And <clears throat> you know, one of the things that I think Commissioner Silverstein mentioned, you know, a, a corridor generally speaking, most of us generally know north, south, yeah. east, west, where to go, depending on the type of um, mode that you're using. Uh, the TMP, our transportation, transportation master plan, is a living document. 
it's got a list of projects right now. Projects go and get accomplished. New projects can get added in, you know, when we, when it's the, the appropriate time to update that document. So certainly there is that element in there as well, where, um, you know, perhaps there will, there will be new projects stemmed from, from this exercise that ultimately we want to add that to the TMP eventually. Um, someone asked me recently whether or not we had a metric for assessing how complete a given street was. And I mean, I, th I thought that was a really interesting question and that's not something we do, um, but it would be sort of cool to think about that. That could be something we explore perhaps as this exercise. I, I, I'm a little fearful of committing to it, given I don't know what that scope would look like. Um, you are correct that I maybe I can, with an eye towards Hugh as well, I don't <laughs> think we have a, 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 a single metric that says how complete the street is. We do have our complete street policy where we want you know, all the corridors to be as um, user-friendly and safe as possible for all modes. But there's always that trade-off um, given most of our streets are are pretty well defined and we don't like to widen streets. So there is that element in there as well that makes it a little bit more difficult, I think. Yeah, I think you're right, Kevin. I, I would say that um, one thing, oh, let me get the mic closer, I would add is that, um, you know, I think defining a complete street is really dependent on context, right? So what you need on an El Camino Real is not the same thing that you need on a local uh, cul-de-sac. Um, in terms of the facility. So measuring, you know, what you have isn't always the right output, but, you know, we do in the industry use measures like level of traffic stress and stuff like that, at least for bicyclists. And, you know, there are some similar measures for pedestrians, but not, not I would say as well developed that can give you a hint a little bit at like, is there a network of complete streets, say? Um, and we can use stuff like that, I think, as we go through an exercise like this. We did use some of that in the in the TMP uh, for those who are paying attention a bit. And, and they can be really useful to helping sort of understand, like, how do you traverse a city across all the streets, um, not just, you know, maybe some I, of the main ones. Do you think in the TMP we had that street classification, like in the and, – mm -hmm. and, and to your point about context, um, you know – even considering classification, I think some of our streets are more complete than others. You know, if we say in our classification sure. that a bicycle boulevard should have these attributes, then if we look at our bicycle boulevards in the city, how many of them have those attributes and how many of them are like, you know, it's on the laundry list somehow. I think that would at least be an interesting check-in point at some point. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. And that's a great way to think about starting to prioritize what we do where, you know, and then taking into context what the challenges are and all the other things going on, then we can start to say, well, we've designated this already, right, to be a certain type of facility, like, that is a presumed priority, but like, let's check in on that to make sure that that priority outweighs all the other priorities. So, you know, yeah, I to do, think but. merging the, the last two ideas around kind of what measurements do we have, as well as the network that you um, mentioned, Hugh, which I think is definitely what we need. Um, if there's a way that we could measure that and say, you know, what percent of our neighborhoods are connected to that network? Or when we think about the, the second bullet point, the corridors that we have, how many people have access to a corridor, a biking corridor, a transit corridor, something that they can get across town without driving. Um, but having that metric there, I at least find useful because then we can compare it year over year and we can say if we're doing we're from making progress. And, and if we see that that's an abominably low number, then that might shock the community. Or if we see that it's really high, then maybe we deprioritize it. Um, but without any kind of number to point to, then we don't really know where we're standing today. I'm sorry, just jumping in. I like what you just said about, well, what you said about the map, what you said about, you know, once you start looking at where those priority quarters are, it doesn't mean that those are the priority quarters, right? It may mean that there's an opportunity for more. There was vastly underserved, you know, areas that we really need to bring in and develop and do that intentionally. So I think there are so many positive outcomes for, for doing it. Okay, great. Loving the discussion here. 
So for the next three slides. Um, oh, wait. Oh, on. Um, I, I just want to chime in on the end yeah. of this um, one. I really like the idea of having some sort of like year over year measurables. I like the idea of looking at like what percent of our streets are like that. I can see how as you go across town, like particular streets are um, more ideally suited. That, right. Every street in Menlo Park is not going to be ideally suited for every mode of traffic. But as we look at those complete routes, um, to Commissioner Silverstein's point, like as we look at those complete routes across town, is there a complete, is there a safe route for each of those modes from like this side of town to that side of town, from this place to that place? So as we look at the overlay of the overlay of the TMP, like is there a route for people that we can say, like if you're on a bike, here's how you go. If you're in a car, here's how you go. Um, and that way, everybody's a little safer. So I like the idea of something like that. I don't know if that's a like subcommittee kind of work, or um, or if that's something that you have to like mull over and come back and tell us if we can do. Yeah, I, I think later on there um, there will be a slide where I identify the existing subcommittees that we have. I think one of the conversation I do want to have tonight would be, <clears throat> excuse me, just making sure that. In terms of the work plan, we're heading to the th right direction. And then with those specific sub bullets, um, which subcommittee would be interested in taking on that task, um, give us a chance to look at the members that are in those subcommittees, whether or not they are still interested. Uh, we will have an opportunity at the next meeting to kind of finalize this and, and also act on any subcommittee member changes that we might want to have. Um, so I think that is one of the topics that we would like to discuss tonight as well. I do quick, quick um, question, I guess. Um, maybe it's been perplexing me for a while is maybe underneath it, there's a, a deeper metric is, you know, how do we know that we're doing a good job? Um, the commission, um, you know, is it the number of requests that we serve or is it, you know, how we've improved the corridors or what is the underlying measurement um, to complement the subjective stuff? Uh, for us as a commission, or and what's um, what's what's been the history of, of any of those measurements? As, you know, have there been measurements? Um, you know, what, how do we judge our success? I guess, fundamental. Evaluating the commission well, itself, well, maybe. Um, if you get invited to that thing at the end of the year, then. yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so how many plaques we get? I mean, <laughs> but, yeah, may, a satisfaction survey or you know, ask the, the, the community how we're doing or how many corridors we improved on or how fast we reacted to things. You know, right. what, has there been any discussions about what simple measures like, you know, vision zero is pretty easy, right? You can, you can measure that vehicle miles traveled, maybe a little more complicated. Is there any kind of guideline measurement that we could use as a group, you know, periodically to evaluate to see how good we're doing? That's, a, that's a, a very interesting point and a great topic of discussion if the, the entire commission is uh, interested in, in partaking. I, I would say, you know, there's a lot of, obviously, of various variables and, and elements that goes into that, right? For example, uh, overall, the commission as a whole is an advisory body. So being able to uh, be at, at the dais, opening this platform to the public, listening to their comments on the projects that they are interested in or have a direct impact on. I think that in of itself is very much about the value of the commission, providing your recommendations to the city council, either you know, your point of view may differ from staff or, or of the same um, wavelength as staff, so to speak, you know, voicing those opinions, I think really is, is a great measure of success that the commission is, is being valuable to the to the um, to the city council because ultimately this is a platform for one, you know, public members to be able to attend and speak their mind. Uh, as an additional avenue for them to to share those opinions in addition to you know emails, phone calls, etc. <clears throat> but you as commissioners also, you know, you you are serving those residents by providing your opinion, your feedback making yourselves available to, to hear those feedbacks that you might, that you might not otherwise come to staff. Uh, I'm sure some of the commissioners have been on, on the commission for a while now, you, you've received emails and calls from residents 
about specific items and mm -hmm. then forwarding those to us, you know, where maybe a resident doesn't quite know exactly who to go to. So they don't, they didn't want to con contact staff, they contact you guys instead. You know, those are all services that you're providing for the city uh, on your free time, I might add. So, you know, while I don't know if there's necessarily a metric, so to speak, I think just being able to you know, be there, speak your mind, provide those great feedbacks on, on various projects that we have. I think that in of itself is, is a pretty good measure of success. And of course, the number of projects that, that you guys um, get, get to, um, you know, provide your feedback on that, that in some respect depends on the staff availability, the, the length of the, those projects. Sometimes our projects take a while because of the outreach process being, we, we, we like to really want to have a, a good, an extensive community outreach feedback. So those projects tend to take a little bit longer um, than you might think. So there's various elements that kind of goes into that as well. So I don't know if I necessarily answered the question in terms of something that's tangible and measurable, but, but I think hopefully mm -hmm. I kind of get that point across. I think it's possible to um, address that question maybe and discuss it as a commission in a later meeting, not to push it off as much as maybe to give us some time to think about it. Because as I start through, them, through in my mind, I think there's one piece of it, which is if you believe as an assumption that the staff is presenting us with projects that are priority projects of the city, um, and that the projects that are being pushed forward by staff reflect um, the current requests and uh, for focus and, and priorities from the council, then it feels like the way to measure our success is um, in the course of a year, for example, did we evaluate you know, uh, priority projects across all areas of focus? Um, did we advise on them? And then was there action taken within what period of time after that or something? We can sort of evaluate the process that is currently set up. Um, and the other piece of it to me is the specifics, which I do agree with Brian. There are other things that we could probably um, measure more precisely. Um, and for me, maybe that falls into the uh, realm of something like public outreach, which is, as we discussed the projects, did we encourage the um, appropriate amount of public outreach given you know the factors or what kind of outreach, whatever. I mean, there's things I think we could measure more precisely that are part of our roles, but I, I think for one, I, I think just as one commissioner speaking, like I, I'd like to think about this a little bit more because I think there's part of this that we are part of a process and the prioritizations are somewhat um, in place so we can measure ourselves against those prioritizations. Some of it is um, our role in public outreach, I think could be measured. And then the other piece maybe is other things we bring to the table. Like, you know, do we think it's important as a commission to occasionally bring up projects that we think should be priority projects and, and how do we do in that regard. So I just think that maybe we need some time to think about how, how we could measure that or how we could reflect about it uh, more often. Yeah, and us staff, we're happy to agendize that as a regular business item for future, for, future, um, for meetings and then happy to kind of take those talking points and we can always go back and, and sort of evaluate them as we see fit. Can I add one thing to the end of that? Like I um, just, as I know, we're going to be thinking on it for a while. Um, I sort of in that role as advisory bodies, like part of it is that in the advisory to the community, one of the things that becomes abundantly apparent as we gather feedback is that not everybody is operating from the same information. And because we all personalize the uh, every decision that's made about a street, everybody has a personal opinion about that uses that street because it affects them. And so um, how we approach it, like if I am a driver, I'm noticing a lot of driver related things. And so I'm noticing more when things are being removed from my driver world and maybe not as much when things are being made more complicated for other like users of the road. And so having information at the ready, when you're out there talking to public who is bothered that we're taking away parking spaces and, and right, that we're taking away things, it's helpful, I think, 
this metric can provide better information for commission members going forward to be able to meet the public with like, I hear what you're saying about that. And like, we're doing this thing over here and this thing over here. And we've like, the, it, it helps to present a better picture to the public about what our balance is, where is the work being done? And then, you know, it is a nice little hurrah at the end of the year where you're like, wow, we did like, toward all these things, like, let's look at what we did over the year and where we removed, where, what we made safer and what we made like better for users and what kind of things we clarified just to help the public see that what we're doing is actually quite broad and to help inform city council who might sometimes hear from particular segments of the community more than others and maybe don't get the full balanced picture of what's really happening. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I've, great. I've, I've, taken, I've taken a few. That's really excellent. I've taken a few notes. I'm glad you brought this up, Brian. And I'm sorry, Commissioner Roman, and thank you, um, Chair Seaburn. I think that that was really helpful what you just said. Um, so I'm taking a couple notes here. I think maybe uh, what I maybe we could um, bring this up in a in a pre meeting, like an agenda setting meeting uh, with Chair Seaburn and myself and you talk about um, maybe when we could bring this back up again. And also I'll check in with Commissioner Roman about it because I think there could be some more structure that would be useful and rewarding for us. Um, yeah. And it doesn't have to measure everything and it could be kind of a straw man that we revise over time. But I like the idea of introducing a bit more of um, maybe periodic looking at that, how we're doing. Yeah, okay. and then certainly, like I say, we will have an opportunity to, you know, kind of reevaluate our subcommittees. So if there's more, yes. more than one yes. commissioner that is interested in this particular topic, we can certainly create an ad hoc subcommittee so that yeah. way you have a platform to talk about this offline. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. So the next three slides are essentially attachment A of the staff report. Um, the main focus here is making sure that you know we capture. The 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 verb the verbiage correctly capture what the um what our what our intent is in, in terms of making sure that the um the projects that the commission we will be evaluating in the future are are kind of adequate and also specifically those sub bullets where we are looking at more specific actionable items and that they are, are reflective of what the commission is looking for. So I, I would look at this more from a, um, just making sure that the verbiage being used here are describing it correctly. So um, I'm, I'm not gonna go through them in, in much detail, just, uh, just generally with the, the second one, a lot of the, act, um, the, the one, one item that got, that got crossed out was an item that, that was accomplished um, this last year. And then the two items are the two new items that we have mentioned uh, just now. Um, Kevin, yeah. while we're on this slide, there's something buried in the second bullet of the first work plan recommendation mm -hmm. that kind of caught my eye. Yeah. Um, is the council updating the transportation impact analysis guidelines? Because that's a form that's a formidable document, and it shapes a lot of how we do things in the city. That is something on our agenda. Uh, we have been kind of looking at it. It, it is something that we're ho hoping to achieve this year, and and I think um, I don't know if here we have more information to add to that, but that is something that we are hoping to achieve this year. Yes. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've made some actually some minor updates um, since we adopted VMT, and then there, we have a little bit of direction from council to look at it more holistically. So yeah, we do hope to get to that um, in the coming year. <laughs> okay, uh, so this one, uh, the major change that we made was to um, number three, which in the past, the last year's work plan, we focused our effort on Middle Avenue. Uh, and also, to some respect, the, the crossing, the Middle Avenue crossing, this is the undercrossing that will connect Burgess Park to essentially the uh, Stanford development at 500 El Camino Real. We have since made quite a uh, good, good, good progress on the project. As a, as a result of that, we decided that we can basically scratch or, or essentially remove it as a isolated uh, item and then instead what we would do, because like we mentioned a little bit earlier, this upcoming year, there is a desire to evaluate some of the more citywide programs and policies. That's why we're adding this. And of course, 
the bullet essentially has to do with the driveway stop sign, uh, stopping sight distance policy that we that we discussed a little bit earlier as well. So, and then <clears throat> in this could be you know the TIA policy as well. Um, as we continue to move forward, uh, like I mentioned, generally speaking, it will come to the commission. The bullet is more about perhaps having a someone that's more interested in working those items and therefore is more of a subcommittee action rather than a um, just a staff bringing an item to the commission. So I, I, that's that's kind of how how our work plan has been kind of structured. So hopefully that makes sense. If if there's an item that wants to be bullet, that generally means to me that there's a commissioner that is interested in forming a subcommittee and working on that item offline with staff. Otherwise, it's a it's, it's a general item that we will bring to to the commission at some point. Okay, sure, yeah, that's fine, yeah. So then the, the next slide here is essentially the last slide for for attachment A. As you can see, for uh, item number six, we uh, removed the two bullets because uh, the first bullet was a. Uh, seamless transit principle resolution, essentially an adoption of a resolution to support that effort, which we have since accomplished. And then the second bullet is basically allocating resources to review those um, recommendations, which we have since accomplished as well. So those two have been uh, stricken out of the work plan. However, we are keeping number six as a whole because we will continue to have uh, regional projects that, that are happening. So we want to make sure that if they are at a if they are at a level where we would like to bring awareness to the commission, either you know as a present as a presentation from from those agencies, such as such as the Sam Trans presentation on the um, on their um, which you call the, uh, the the program where they provide those on call that you can call them and you get a transit service uh, to somewhere like maybe just an info item that staff will provide, for example. The Bayfront Expressway, the the bus only, uh, the shoulder only bus lane that is currently in, in, in progress. You know, whenever that there is a good milestone that we want to make sure that the commission is aware of, we'll continue to to provide those updates as well. Um, this is my area of least knowledge. Obviously, Dean Eleven, who's the previous chair of the commission's area mm -hmm. of great expertise here, um, yep. but. Is this something that should be on our work plan? Because is this something that um, the commission, it's on the commission or we have a responsibility to um, uh, encourage and, and, and um, direct the city council toward opportunities with regard to regional projects? Or is that already like part of what the staff does? I've always been a bit confused about our role here. So I don't know if it should be on work plan or not. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, any item that's on here inherently is on staff's plate. So anything okay. that is on the work plan, that means it's towards, it's something that the city council would like some action on for that year. Okay. So any item that's on here inherently means that it's an item that staff is working on, which will then bring to the commission for feedback, oh. right? Okay, so, so it could be brought to the commission. Right, okay. so I, I would say, you know, from using number six as an example, you know, of course, there's various uh, interest in those regional efforts. Some, some might be more interesting than others. We're keeping this on here because we wanted to make sure that um, you guys are aware that this is an item that we will continue to bring to the commission uh, whenever that we have a a, a, a milestone that is worth um, updating the commission on. I think that mm -hmm. one of the things I've liked about the way you've presented this, Kevin, is that you're tying the work plan recommendations or the, or the substance of the work plan back to the subcommittees and what they're working on. Right. And this is one where I always get a little bit confused. It sounds like the staff will update us on, on developments, but I don't know that we need, or do we need question for me, um, from me, I guess, um, you know, a subcommittee on it. Exactly. Right. So any, any items here that are um, part of the numeric list, yeah, those are inherently items that staff is working on and we'll continue to bring okay. them to this, to the commission for feedback. And ultimately, like I say, to the city council for approval, the bullet items are, are items that we as staff have heard from the commission 
that is something that they're interested in being involved in beyond uh, things that, that we will bring to you. Okay. So, so that those are why, that's why they've been kind of identified explicitly because of the, the, of the role of a potential subcommittee might be involved in the process. Can I ask a clarifying okay. question? Yeah, sure. Can you, if you go back a slide to item number one, um, I don't mean this to sound snarky because I'm <laughs> actually genuinely curious about it, yeah. but um, the, the wording on the first bullet point mm -hmm. is recommending the projects to most likely reduce vehicle miles traveled. Is the city council genuinely interested in the projects that are most likely to reduce vehicles mile, vehicle miles traveled? Because we could, you know, get rid of all parking everywhere, and that would achieve that goal with a lot of other considerations in mind. And so I'm, I'm wondering, like, the most likely aspect is that the priority that we should be going after? I, I think that's a that's a really good question in terms of. Um, I would say in this case, it's it's really more of a there's there's a scale, so to speak, right? In, in this case, the the numeric list we are identifying them as big picture items. There's definitely a desire from the city council perspective to work on projects that would help reduce vehicle mass travel. Um, for example, the climate action plan I think is a really good example. The the TMP we have. Uh, a significant amount of pet and bike projects in the TMP compared to, um, you know, more traditional vehicular type of improvements. I, I think there's definitely uh, the direction. I think this is more an evaluation, maybe a more a statement of the, the direction that the city is heading towards and not necessarily the scale that, that, that you would produce. I think that ultimately becomes a city council priority direction and that that's for them to, to have that conversation as to to you know how how large that becomes. Yeah. Um, can I say something about that? Because this one kind of stuck out to me. I sort of remember the origin story of this getting into the work plan, and I think it's an Adina story. Um, but to me, it feels kind of redundant given the second item. And I also don't think we're we're necessarily VMT reduction experts. Um, like that sounds that implies a metric that we don't have at our fingertips. So I'm wondering if I'm alone in thinking that we could collapse that. I mean, conceptually, yes, we should be. And I, I think the bullet point about vetting development projects and updating the TAA guidelines um, to make sure that things are bike ped transit friendly and accessible still makes a ton of sense under that. But I'm assuming that the bike ped projects and things like that that come to us through the TMP are in general going to be VMT reducing by their nature. and maybe we don't need to lay it out like this. Is that, I don't know if other people agree. It just, it feels a little redundant. You, you are correct from a historic standpoint that the first bullet did have to, more to do with when the climate action plan was still in progress. And, and so there was a desire from the commission at the time to be more involved in that. I would certainly agree with you that there is definitely a certain, a certain redundancy with um, the second bullet because the second bullet essentially is where now we're looking at the TMP list and identifying those projects accordingly or, or tasks, if you will. So certainly if there's a desire from the commission as a whole to, to remove one or both bullets, um, staff would entertain that, Does, that consideration. I, I, I'm sure there is an, an opportunity to eliminate redundancy. The only thing mm -hmm. I'd say is that if we just left the language as provide input on major development projects, to me that feels a little passive. And I'm wondering if there's a way we could inject, maybe not the, the substance or wording of the first bullet, but something along the lines of uh, the commission having a role in proactively, not necessarily maybe identifying, but um, recommending prioritization of projects that would reduce X, Y, and Z or advocating or something there. Because right now, just providing input on projects feels like things come in front of us we advocate them through the lens of let's, you know, encourage bike and ped, et cetera. But isn't there something here where the commission could be proactive in making recommendations or, or, or uh, recommending prioritization of types of projects that we think would be most impactful? Or is that sort of already done? Is that what you're thinking? That is sort of already but done to, to some extent. 
by okay. by staff. Yeah, and the the other point that I would probably point to would be you know you you as commissioners are also residents of Menlo Park. So whenever the city council are at the time where they talk about their priorities and and projects associated with that priorities, you know you, you as residents are more than welcome to to come and speak your um, what what you are interested in seeing. I think the commission as a whole would be a little bit of a different story because mm-hmm. generally okay. we are trying right. to to be able to uh, work on those projects that are more in line with what the city council is looking for. So there is that 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 the, the dynamic of the commission. We as a commission here, the I think historically speaking, we have looked at the CIP, the Capital Improvement Program, uh, because it's a five year program. That means each year there's an opportunity to to maybe look at the program again and maybe add project on top of that. And that has traditionally been where the platform, where the commission would would make their recommendations. And and for example. Um, I think maybe two or three years ago, when the middle field resurfacing jobs stopped popping up to the CIP program, the commission at the time, and I think that was through uh, former chair Adina, spoke at the city council meeting, making sure that that project then get evaluated in terms of also transportation, transportation safety. So you know, as a result of that, there's kind of that road diet that, that occur. And then there's additional elements that will go along with that as well in the, in the future years. So in the, in the, in the past, that's, that has been sort of the way the commission uh, influenced the type of projects that the city council take on, not necessarily go into the city council and say, we would like X, Y, Z. Um, there's another thing in here that's very much preemptive and not reactive, which is the, if there are really going to be updating the transportation impact analysis guidelines. That's mm-hmm. huge. It is. Because it means that any major development project that comes to the city, when we talk about like what the impact of the development is, we're no longer just looking yeah. at level of service. We're looking at what does it do for bike and ped safety? What does it do mm-hmm. for transit? What and, and what mitigations might need be needed? And a lot of the things that we've seen come to us that have been suboptimal from a bike ped standpoint actually stem from those guidelines they're sort of baked into the rules that we have as a city right now. And so changing the rules Mm -hmm. um, to make them more favorable to multimodal transportation seems really huge. It almost feels like it deserves its own bullet. I was about to say the same thing. I mean, maybe what we do here, back to what you, the three of you were recommending is we eliminate the first bullet and we go to the second bullet. I agree with Commissioner Bruzzi. I would take update the transportation impact analysis and make it a separate bullet because it seems to be really important. And if we separate it, I think we highlight it more and, and signal our intent to do that. I think you said this year. Mm-hmm. Um, also, if we kept it as part of that sentence, by the way, we'd probably have to say, if I'm not wrong, providing input, blah, 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 and updating the, you know, I think it's supposed to be back to the first part of the sentence, but I, I would also make it a separate bullet. So what I, what I would recommend then is, so what I'm hearing is that the first bullet, this general consensus that the first bullet can be removed from the list. What I would recommend is then for the second bullet, the part where it says, and update the transportation impact analysis guidelines to include multimodal study metrics, uh, separating that from this bullet and then adding that into number three, because that's where now we're looking at citywide policies and programs, and that's generally where that falls. So that would be my recommendation. Okay. Yeah, I think sub bullet three, is, as thinking about our policies and programs, right. is an awesome broader Agreed. project that doesn't need to just be sure. specific to driveways. Ex- definitely. Exactly. Yeah. And, and the intent, that's exactly correct. The intent for Good. Uh, the list number three is Great. anything that is citywide policy program related would then kind of fall into that category. Great. I do have one follow-up on one, uh, which is about providing input on development projects, which is, do we have, and this is likely a question for not to be answered in this meeting maybe, but um, do we have a consensus between commission staff, amongst commission staff and the council that our commission will be um, involved in, in a timely way to provide input on major development projects? Um, I know at the priorities meeting back in more early March or so, I I did make a public comment about um, 
you know, in the same way that the planning commission reviews those projects, I thought the complete streets commission should always be included in review, the review of those projects to make sure we were looking at it along a transportation impact and, and sort of multimodal encouraging multimodal options. Um, and I, I didn't follow up on that, but I do think, I don't know if it's part of the process or if it's ad hoc or if it's wishful thinking, but I wish it were more standardized or maybe agreed upon between us and the council that we will be involved in that way and how that will take shape. Yeah, and, and generally, I think definitely welcome a, a further conversation on this particular topic. Uh, I would say historically or generally speaking, when whenever we have a big development project where there's actually roadway configuration changes, that's where staff draws the line. If there's a significant impact to the roadway system, that's where it comes to to the commission. We do have, you know, what some might consider to be a large development project. Ultimately, it's on a single parcel, multifamily development units, multi stories, where there is really no impact to the system, so to speak, other than adding cars mm -hmm. and pedestrians and bikes, of course. But in terms of the actual roadway uh, characteristic, mm. they're probably adding a sidewalk. Um, they're adding streetlights. They are, uh, maybe there's an opportunity for them to, to help with, you know, bike facilities um, kind of in the immediate adjacent uh, roadways. That, that's typically where the line is drawn because in that case, those are fairly standard improvements that comes along with the development, and there's really no change, no significant changes that that you as a commission or even we as staff would would make on those. But for example, Willow Village, that was a whole different story. Yes. So that came to the commission. Uh, SRI, I'm sorry, the uh, the um, uh, the center, the the I forget what the official term right now for the, this, the SRI development, those buildings that's on Parkland. Ravenswood between Parkland. Thank you very much. Yes. So that is also an item that we do anticipate to bring to the commission at some point um, because it does have a significant impact to the roadway system itself. Okay. So the staff is operating under that rubric that if it, it significantly impacts the roadway, then it, it sort of initiates our review. Exactly. Um, in the case of um, uh Willow Village and, and the Facebook conversation we had last May, um, we our review was invited because it did affect roadways. But at the same time, as you know, in that meeting when we were giving our point of view, um, I guess Kyle said, well, thanks for the point of view, but it's not necessarily, um, I don't know if you use the word influential, but it's not, it's not going to affect the staff report to the council, right? We were just giving our opinion to a certain extent in that meeting? I, I, I think when he say that it was on particular segments, uh, for example, on Willow Row. Willow Row is not our right of way. Yeah. Uh, we don't have control. Over, we have influence in terms of what the city would like to see, but yeah. ultimately we don't have a desire. So I, I wouldn't say that it necessarily, well, I think what happened was we took the feedback and on roadways where we could actually influence. So anything that's kind of, beyond Willow Row, I think those definitely make a difference. I, I recall- Yes, I, I'm our, remembering our, it now. Our team right, yeah. making changes based on the feedback that we got from the commission. I think that particular comment has more to do with some of the uh, infrastructures that are kind of beyond the control of, 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 of our agency um, or- Okay. Yeah, like for example, fire would have a say in some of the, yeah. the elements as well that, that is kind of beyond. Yeah. what we can do. I mean, I sort of remember there was an element of it, like we're talking to you in May, it's going to the council in June. We're not going to sort of change anything between this conversation and the council's, the presentation council. And I, I guess that made me feel that, or made me wonder if our commission in advising was being given enough time to influence outcomes. So we can work on that in the future. It sounds like you, your, you and staff have a, have a distinct idea about when um, a major development project rises to the point of involving us, but mm -hmm. I guess I would I want to encourage staff to involve us, um, you know, with enough uh, time that our comments can be incorporated into the what the city council sees. Yeah, and, and certainly I think another thing that I could potentially um, incorporate into uh, my role as a liaison because I, I I do provide whenever there's a planning commission or a city council yes, that that um, you know looking at a 
um, environmental study for for those type of projects. You know, at that time, I could put, I could potentially kind of highlight them a little bit better, uh, and then that way, for those that are interested, you have an opportunity to look at the the project itself and then see if it's something that you know, you personally would like to be involved in, or maybe you feel like the commission should be involved in, and then we can we can have an offline dialogue about that. Okay, that's yeah. helpful. Yeah, yeah, that's helpful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, so that's number one. Can I actually make a really, sorry, I feel like we're editing from the dais here. Um, but that's I think what that's we're here kind for. of what we're doing. So yeah, that's what we're doing. It's, it's tedious for people. Sorry, sorry, you. Um, I feel like number number one is this really inspirational bullet, and number two is like advance TMP. And if I go back to council goals, there's a safe streets goal, there's a climate action goal, and these things that we're talking about here. If you go back, yeah, um, the bullets, the first two bullets, numbers one and like, sorry, <laughs> um, can you go back to the numbers again? Um, the first, uh, so. I feel like number one could be about, well, it's not a newly adopted climate action plan anymore, but it could be basically to advance the council's priorities of climate action and safe streets. And then there can be these sub bullets of recommending the routes and reviewing development proposals. Um, and I'm wondering if anybody else feels the same way. It's just, we're tying, it seems neater because the TMP isn't in and of itself a goal or a dream. It's sort of a mechanism. It's a collection of projects and it feels like we might want to be more sort of, I think the category, the categories are bugging me because they're not mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive and stuff like that. I'm wondering if anybody else feels the same way. I would be inclined to agree that like, I, we don't need TMP in more than one of those work plan. Like how can we figure out like the work plan that involves TMP work, like that it's sort of, I don't know. Am I capturing what you said? I think it's just the tune PN isn't an, an end unto itself. It's it's a tool. So this I this evaluating key and confirming key north, south, east, west corridors for project prioritization for TMP project that could just as easily fit under the climate action plan. It does, it serves the same goal. And it also serves the goal of making safe streets safer. And so I think nesting the projects that serve those goals under that sort of general arching, otherwise it's weird because it looks like everything else we're doing isn't about the climate action plan, but most of it is because um, it serves the EMT reduction and it's also about safety. I think that's what I'm trying to say, if that's clear. So if um, Commissioner Baruzzi, if you don't mind just kind of restating what your recommendation is for number one, if you. Yeah, I think what I would do is have, is nest the pro the, the projects like evaluating and prioritizing um, TMP projects, um, advising on Middle Avenue corridor, providing input on development projects and updating the TIA guidelines. Actually that one goes under the policies, right? But these specific things seem to kind of nest under the safe streets and um, climate action goals of city council. And to a certain extent, so does everything, but. Um, so would the, would the commission be willing to entertain the idea of perhaps we just strike number one? Because we already have the first bullet strike out already. So just strike out the first, the first num number one. But what, what we will do is we'll move the second, what's remaining of the second bullet into number two. Would that would that work for the commission? Or maybe or maybe that becomes its own number one. Yeah. Can you read me the like I, I'm I'm mixed up in what one and what two is? Can right. You read so, me my apologies. Yeah. And I'll so uh, just to um, to this point, what we have decided with number one is strike out bullet number one. Right. The review the city's TMP and recommending the project most likely to reduce VMT. That's gone. Of course, with bullet number two, we already moved the second half 
to number three, the, the part where an update. So essentially what's remaining of the second bullet becomes its own number one. So does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And then is that the thing? So if we're, if, if number one becomes providing input on major development projects by looking at them through the lens of transportation and accessibility, that is the thing that I think you're saying, Kate, Commissioner Bruzzi, also fits in with evaluate and confirm key north, south, east, west corridors for project, right? Is that what you're saying? Kind of? I'm kind of wishing I'd sent edits before the meeting because it's really <laughs> hard to do this. I don't know, Kevin, how you can, I mean, um, I, I think the, yeah, I guess I think the, 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 goal sub goal thing is is messing me up a little bit personally like it feels like uh these key actions either need to be elevated on their own or they need to be under one or two umbrellas can i um okay. if i were to synthesize things um i think one broad workflow is evaluating projects we can evaluate them under the guise of climate action or vehicle miles traveled or other metrics you want to use, but one broad project that we need to take on is how do we evaluate and prioritize all of the things that we want to do, um, either as currently part of the TMP or potentially new ones that weren't originally brought up. But I would say, you know, this entire page as it sits, as it sits was kind of around how do we evaluate what we want to do and how do we prioritize those. And that's what I would have is like our big overarching, this is what one of the things we want to accomplish, prioritizing. What, but is that, is that what we actually can do? Can we really evaluate and prioritize? It's mostly support and look at things through the, through the lens of, of you know, complete streets lens, right? I, and I bring up a great question. I just want to be sure I understand what the verb actually is that we're doing. Mm -hmm. do, do can we really evaluate and prioritize? Well, I, I think so. I mean, I think when I read the evaluate and confirm, um, I think that's the part that we're trying to do. Like, how do we evaluate? So while Kevin's typing, let me weigh in real quick. So I think that uh, like two things to, or something to keep in mind, right, is that there's a little bit, there's how we, there's sort of the prioritization of projects to keep in mind, but the evaluation or the, you know, review is the review of the actual projects as they come forward. And that's going to come forward. Those are going to come forward more often than we're, we're not going to reprioritize every time we do a project, right? Because otherwise we're never getting anything done. We're just spending our time kind of prioritizing a list, like moving things around on the list, right? So so probably important to be a little careful not to put this into a, a framework where you're thinking about it as a prioritization exercise primarily. And I think the prioritization exercise is important. It's something that, you know, uh, we think based on kind of where we're at makes sense to take this kind of, uh, you know, 30,000 foot look um, at the projects we have and, and how we move them forward. Um, but before that can have any influence, we've got a long pipeline, as I think many of you know, of projects that are in the works now that many of which are going to require a ton of staff attention uh, over the next, you know, handful uh, of years, honestly. And there's a little bit of a level where this is, you know, we do this annually. So we can look beyond the annual, but the concrete actions that you all are involved in at some level, um, you know, may carry over from year to year, but we'll also need to have be actionable within the time frame of a year, if that makes sense, uh, generally. And, and if they're not, then it's probably something that's more for the future to think about. So that might help a little. So this is my um, attempt at kind of demonstrating what I was speaking a little bit earlier. So we struck out the first bullet. We moved the 
second half of the second bullet into number three. Yeah. And essentially we will strike out the initial number one and instead move this part into number one. So essentially it becomes a high level item. Because um, ultimately, I think to some of, I, I think Commissioner Bruzzi's, or, or maybe both Commissioner Bruzzi and Commissioner Silverstein's standpoint is that it's inherently in there. The, the, the projects that are um, being you know, discussed and, and ultimately being moved forward with inherently are more climate action plan, uh, certainly have climate action plan elements in them. I do really like that sentence. I think maybe we just list name at the outset that we're supporting council goals of climate action and safe streets right. and that we support climate action in particular by making driving alternatives safer and more appealing. And we support safe streets by, you know, identifying like, you know, reviewing and identifying improvements. And, um, and then we get into the actual activities that we're expected to do within a year, like project review and, project prioritization, which is a lesser thing, as you've pointed out, and then the policy review. And there are a couple of policies that we're gonna be reviewing this year that we've talked about, something like that. That's correct. So, so in our work plan, we have that mission statement that sort of summarizes the, the goals that the commission here as a whole is supporting the city council on. So we, we explicitly identify, you know, complete street vision zero, climate action plan, and, and then, so number one, then kind of like, like you mentioned, then the, the numeric list then goes into those spe more, more specific items. So for example, number one now becomes review of development projects. Um, and, and we're talking about basically large size development projects that have a roadway configuration impact. Um, and then of course, inherently, I think most of your feedbacks will gear towards pet bike uh, public safety type of comments. Can I add one more note to all this? And a, a lot, I mean, it sounds like some of this is stuff to sort of mull over and come back to next month, but just in this piece, like the conversation, how some of these actually address m multiple aspects mm -hmm. of these things that we're looking at. And so when we put it particularly at like the pit where it's about the climate action plan, like those goals actually meet more than one thing. And so it makes me think as we look at those kind of big pieces of what we're working on that really we can create like these are the things we're working on and then later we can go back through and be like this one supports like it supports housing it supports like these it supports all these city council goals right like each one of these I can make an argument about number one with the major projects right like that if you're going to build a new housing complex out in suburban park like you're going to want a way for those people to be able to get downtown safely and the more of them we can get downtown safely using modes that aren't cars will reduce vehicle miles travel. So like I can see every one of these are gonna fit into. And so climate action doesn't necessarily need to be called out because I think everything's gonna fit all five of these goals. No, I agree with that a lot. I think that's great. And I think you can just basically list the deliverables, provide input, evaluate and confirm North South, continue to advise, and then there's a couple other on the next page. And those are just basically not only goals of priorities, but also some deliverables. Uh, we can say whether we did or didn't do. Um, <laughs> I hope not, I hope not. <laughs> um, so where we are then is that uh, Commissioner Bruzzi's suggestion of taking the language that's currently in yellow that people thought was inherent to this state it up top, like with the mission statement or not state it at all? I disagree, but that's okay. I don't want to spend the whole thing wordsmithing. I think it's really important to uh, clearly and with in more um, granularity state our purpose. I think the public reads these things. And I think the uh, phrasing of making alternatives driving safety more attractive is important. I, I think tying that back to the goals, the climate action plan is more specific than the mission statement is currently. So I personally probably would have done mission statement, keep it 
uh, goals and priorities, number one, provide input on major development projects. Number two, to advance the goals of the city's new adaptive climate action plan, reinforcing that and connecting it to the work that's listed below. Um, then list out one, you know, network, bike peg network with corridors to Middle Avenue and maybe some other projects. So. So just a point of clarity, I think ultimately, and then those are, um, um, those are great sort of feedback in terms of what the commission ultimately will be kind of deliberating on or, or providing recommendations on. In, in this case, what we're trying to do is we're trying to be a little bit more simplistic in terms of what's the overarching goal that the, the commission is trying to, to accomplish. And, and I'd certainly recognize the, the verbiage of the you know, alternative to driving safer and more attractive. We can certainly try to you know, incorporate that particular verbiage into the mission statement and we can return that return back next meeting okay. to see how that, how that looks. But in terms of the numeric list, I, I certainly would recommend that you know, they, they are intended to be more high level, general that, that support the city council's goal. So I identifying mean, I, specific projects doesn't really. Well, you are there. identifying specific yeah. projects right there under two, right? The, uh, right. I wasn't saying anything more than that. You're already identifying two of them. Right. So the, the bullets are more because there's an interest in kind of furthering the action beyond just your standard. Correct. So if there's anything right. else there that we would want to, that's where it would go. Exactly. I have an idea of an addition there that right. I haven't said yet, but yeah. yeah, I mean, I just, I'll emphasize it again, that I do think uh, language like making alternatives to driver driving safe, safer and more attractive is a lot more compelling to the average reader than just saying adopted goals, da, 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 because you don't necessarily know what those goals are. You would like a reminder about how those, those uh, goals of the city uh, end up manifesting through the actions taken by the commission. Okay. I think it's more compelling language than the language in our mission statement. Like it's, you know, the mission statement is kind of, if I were, you know, evaluating this with my nonprofit mission statement add on, I would not like, but so maybe, maybe, maybe consider like working the sort of the how, yeah. like our vision is this, how this is the how, the how is making it more attractive, making it safer, um, BNP reduction, safety, encouragement. And then these are the actual activities. Yep. Yeah, um, and can, it sounds like we we're on the same page. Yep. But I, yeah, I agree with you. I, I like the language, and it's hard to let it go. It just didn't. It felt weirdly segmented from all the rest of the goals when it feels like an an umbrella yeah. vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, in relation to advice city council implementation of the TMP, and then the two projects that are listed below. Oops, I hear, um, here you're on Sorry. camera, Let um, me, yeah. middle, <laughs> just letting you know, uh, middle Avenue and then the corridors, I guess, is this an okay time to talk about, is there anything else we would list there that would be reflected in the work of the subcommittees? Um, okay, Kevin, I'm going to, I'm going to put it out there. So, um, uh, sorry, I'm trying to pull up the, um, that's all right. Attachment yeah. A again. Uh, to your question, yes. If there is a desire from any commissioners to, you know, perhaps form a subcommittee to work, continue to work on a specific element, uh, I would say let, let's have that conversation now. Definitely. Can I jump in? Sorry. Of you, course. Can I suggest that we just take a quick pause because we sure. sort of drifted from questions into edits and we haven't done public comment. Um, so we probably should just see if there's any public comment on the oh, work thank plan <laughs> and then, uh, and then continue doing edits. Uh, it's not a huge deal, but it would be helpful. Thank just you. So let me just wrap up the, um, the presentations in that case. Let me see what you guys are seeing. You're seeing. Okay. Never mind. Hang on one second. Okay, so now you're looking at the slide. Okay, so I just have a couple more slides so we can wrap up the presentation. Yeah, it's pretty. Kevin, yeah, we're seeing the presenter view for what it's worth, not the. Oh, okay. You know, thank you very much. Hang on. Too many screens here. Nope, still the same. There's a little switch button. Usually. My apologies. Let's see. You know what? I'll just go this way instead. There we go. Trickiness of technology. Uh, 
Okay, so actions tonight, we kind of been doing quite a bit of that already. So essentially reviewing the red line work plan, uh, confirming the current and new tasks. Um, bullet number three and number four could be um, deferred to next meeting, uh, but basically approving the work plan and then designating uh, a commissioner to present um, it, or to at least attend uh, when we go to the um, go to the city council. Oops. Sorry, here we go. There it is. And then of course, the next step is just uh, city council adoption. And with that, I will end the presentation. And then um, procedurally speaking right now would be commissioner Q&A, clarifying questions. So if there's any additional clarifying questions, I'll take those. Otherwise, I will open it up for public comments. And then we'll um, go back to editing. Gonna take the silence I, I as in. I have a clarifying oh, question. Yes. Um, if we have action items from us in terms of staff reworking the words here, how on if you go to slide eleven, how would we get to actually adopting or approving the work plan tonight? So not then then that wouldn't be tonight. Okay. That would be the next next meeting. Our yeah our August meeting. We're definitely heading that way, especially since we're gonna incorporate the mission statement with the verbiage of the uh, safe street and et cetera. Okay, so I'm gonna take that as in no more clarifying questions. So at this point I am going to, I'm oh, sorry. So I'm kind of taking over your road there, Chair, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna go ahead and read off the um, public comment notes here so for members of the public wish to provide public comment for any items uh, for tonight uh, for this particular item the work plan item if you can please go ahead and engage your raise hand feature if you're participating online or if you're calling in from a landline or cell phone press 9 to raise your virtual hand if you're participating in person um, please wait for the chair to call for your name and then you can step up to the podium and make your comments so I know that we do have two members of the public in a virtual room. So I'm going to maybe give them a second to see if they would like to provide public comments. I'm going to take that as a no. So in that case, I will, through the chair, close the public comments and return the meeting back to the desk. Thank you, Kevin. Um, so uh, feedback, commissioners, thoughts that we haven't already talked about? For the next part, is this the part where we start adding things to the list? Yes, let's. We can go back to uh, looking at the work plans and editing accordingly. Okay. Yeah, I have some questions on number three in terms of policies that we'd want to either review or have. Um, this is just totally part of my naivete, but do we have a policy around? bike parking at city facilities um, in terms of when we add bike parking, how much do we need based on, I mean, I, I know like in the summers, particularly Burgess pool fills up bike parking really quickly. And I don't know if we have a policy around how much is too much, how much is not enough. Um, I think that would be an interesting thing to actually have a policy for. Uh, um, another question is, um, Parking downtown, how much is too much? Do we need paid parking, free parking? Uh, we have parking lots, we have street parking and things like that. And I mean, there's a lot of parking around and what is our policy around, again, how much is too much and how much is not enough? And if we see that things are either overcrowded or undercrowded, what, what framework do we use in order to make those types of decisions? Uh, and then the last thing I wrote down was, I don't know if the commission here has any influence on this, but our parking requirements for development and for residential and for ADUs and for commercial buildings. Do we have any, influ any influence or, or what are our, um, I guess, do we have any uh, recommendations towards updating those? I mean, I know there are policies to date, but would we be involved in making recommendations to city council on ever changing those? Okay, so uh, I think staff can kind of take that one. So I think there's generally two two big categories being mentioned here. Uh, I'll take the easy one, which is development. The the city we do have development 
guideline policies that dictates the size of the development and how much uh, class one, class two parking. So bike locker versus bike rack, how, how many of those they need to provide from, from the development size. Uh, so we definitely have those policies in place already. The, the, the planning division through sort of the general plan guideline or the specific plan guideline will, will have, will, would have those numbers. Uh, readily available online. So happy to kind of share those as well. We as commission do not really have, and we, we, we historically speaking, not necessarily input, meaning um, it doesn't really come to the commission for that type of uh, evaluation. It's more generally, if a particular commissioner is interested, they would go to the planning commission and speak off those items. That's uh, historically been sort of the process behind that. I know that there's generally a desire, if there's a parking requirement change, I think that typically that could come to the commission if there's a strong desire for that. Um, again, those, those type of policies don't really get updated, you know, even on a semi-regular basis, unless there's a strong desire because it got, it got, it's got to go through essentially a municipal change, right? So the, hopefully that answers your question. I, I think hey, Kevin, can I jump in on, on something there? Yeah. Um, just as a little bit of context. So our the guidelines that we do have that are in the city zoning code that Kevin referenced, they're basically consistent or the same as what's in sort of national best practice guidance from the American Association of Bicycle and Pedestrian um, officials. So or I'm not saying the name exactly right, but we're, they're not. Uh, so So I think that they're pretty good. But I think also what you're asking about is parking at public facilities. And just this is sort of down the road a little bit, but there's um, one of the things I think that we will want to do at some point in the future is get funding, which we can get from very likely from the transportation authority to do a more comprehensive audit of our bike parking within the city and to look at where we want to put more. We are putting in bike racks in some places. Uh, we have a handful um, and, I, and we have had requests for more in the Burgess campus, and I know those can fill up. So, uh, you know, it's certainly something that we can continue to look at. We, I don't think we have enough to address the full um, set of requests uh, that exist right now, uh, but it's something that, um, you know, as sort of relevant grant funding comes about, you know, we can continue to pursue um, some of those things to really kind of better understand it and, and more fully um, implement uh, parking on public facilities. Bike parking. So just to quickly respond, I think, you know, getting grant funding and doing audits are awesome projects, but they seem one off. What I would love to see is, you know, if we have a policy that says if bike racks fill up more than, you know, 50% of the time, then we add more bike racks and we have kind of an ongoing framework to use, whether or not our farmer's market or our libraries or parks or pools have enough bike parking on, on kind of an ongoing basis that we can then use to evaluate just regularly as opposed to once every two years or how often we would do these audits. So I'm sorry, Hugh, your, your response to that was that uh, our public facilities comply with like a standard that you, is that correct? No, our development because regulations are, mm -hmm. are sort of, but uh, how much bike parking exists at public facilities? I, I definitely agree that there are um, there's some limitation. We, we we don't have enough, um, and and so and, and I think Commissioner Silverstein, to your point, um, you know, uh, this is probably a place where just filling out a uh, one of our sort of online C click fix requests, you know, just helps it get in the queue, and we can we can work on trying to add. It's we can't always add, right? We have to have the right kind of place to to add it and one thing and another but um we can we can definitely try to work on um adding parking kind of as you say in the meantime um we, we have done some of that there's some that's gone in recently near the caltrain station because uh, those racks were yep. filling up um and then there's some others uh that, that we're put we've put in we put in some near the Bellhaven elementary school one thing i i always want to be careful of is that we know there are high demand areas and we want to be careful not to just be putting in in the areas that are like right next to where we staff are and we see that there are issues but also kind of being a little bit oh, yeah. more taking more of a citywide look so that's why mm -hmm. this sort of idea of sort of trying to get some funding to help us actually have a better understanding of what the uh, sort of public uh availability of parking is and then use that to then sort of get money to install more racks as well i mean I, commissioner silverstein i like that idea a lot and i wonder it just reminds me of this 
the bullet in evaluate and confirm key north, south, east, west corridors. It's a similar approach. It's like evaluate um, the practices and the gaps and the needs, supply and demand, et cetera, et cetera. So I would feel comfortable adding that as um, as something that we could be prioritizing this year through a subcommittee's work. It, it doesn't sound to me like a and a huge work driver if people are willing to take it on. But I do I do like the idea of focusing it on the public facilities because that's something clearly that we can control and that, that we are responsible for. I think we, I think we can have a subcommittee that kind of similar in nature of the North-South Corridor have yeah. the subcommittee identify areas that may have shortage. And, and so kind of a sure. little bit piggyback off what, what he was saying about yes you know, coming to staff members and telling us that, hey, this particular area might need more parking spaces. I would probably caution the policy aspect of things. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and there's two reasons for that. I think one definitely will be more uh, staff intensive because I think, I think uh, correct me if I'm um, misquoting you, Commissioner Silverstein, you're, you're thinking more towards like actual observations of bike racks usage, percent usage on a more, you know, semi-regular basis? Yeah, I, I wasn't trying to speak to actually implement a policy, but right. sure, my ideal situation would be whenever we run out of bike parking, we add more bike parking. If I mean, that's the case, yeah. then it's a simple yeah. letting a staff know. And then if we have the resources and, and the available availabilities, we are more than happy to add those bike racks as long as there's, you know, room available, sufficient clearance, et cetera. But absolutely, if there's more of a one-off type of situation, more than more than happy to address those. I mean, I think evaluating it um, and saying that we're going to evaluate it is um, a good idea in part because, as he was pointing out, it encourages us to evaluate it outside of the neighborhoods we're familiar with. Um, and if that eventually a policy makes sense, it could go there. But I mean, I do like flagging this for the council because it makes them aware it's something that we care about and are looking at. And in and, and that way, it, it gets a bit more visibility as a potential issue. I, I, I agree with Sure, so we're about adding it. Mm -hmm. yeah, just using it as an example, I'll take it like one step further. And again, this idea of a checklist for the community to use. So say somebody in the community says, oh, we need more bike racks at uh, Trader Joe's, for example. It'd be great to have the policy that's that you guys are using behind the scenes more visible up front. So that you say, well, okay, we use that criteria, you use that criteria, and the community can self-evaluate and use that criteria and say, look, okay, um, you know, whatever the policy is, somehow translate that into some type of, you know, checklist or something that's visible. And the idea is that that's available to the community. And, you know, so we're, we're not between the community and the council. I mean, we're trying to facilitate it so the community understands how they can do, how they can deal with it themselves. So, if somebody in the community says, "I, I, you know, another bike rack needed right outside the city council, right?" <laughs> um, you know, they say, "Okay, well, what's the criteria that would be used to judge whether that that goes forward?" Does that make sense? Certainly, and and I think right now our practice has always been, you know, we'll we'll accept that request. And then we'll evaluate sort of the availability, the, the sort of staff availability in terms of um, the, the resources to bike those bike racks is generally, you know, we'll, we'll be paying for those. Um, the installation generally comes along with that. And then the, it's, it's a matter of just basically kind of fitting that within the, the overall work schedule. If you're talking more in terms of a policy, as in there's, an op there's actually a chance of us denying that request, we don't quite have something like that yet. And that would probably be a much bigger effort than something that the commission on the work plan, I, I would be uncomfortable taking that on unless it's something directed by the city council. Because I think, and if I'm, I'm, I'm obviously it could be misinterpreting your intent here, but if we're looking at a policy that actually evaluates whether or not a request coming in holds water and there's an opportunity we might not do it, that's a completely different policy than what we're doing right now, which is we generally accept that and making sure that there's room for it. If there's no room, obviously we can't. And then the resources necessary to buy the rack. So um, I 
totally appreciate that everything needs to be prioritized and you know there's work that needs to get done in order to, to make any changes and, and that's mm -hmm. totally reasonable um we could have a policy in theory that you know prioritizes funding for bike racks over other things and i don't know how all that those budgets kind of work out and make sure that we have enough in terms of spacing i, I know that you and, and mr louch mentioned we need to have enough space uh to go potentially the radical route there's always parking spots that take up a lot of space i mean every public facility has probably 50 times more space dedicated to car parking than bike parking. Um, and in theory, we could have a policy that says if the bike racks fill up, then we can take out one parking spot and make that available to 10 bikes or whatever that might be. Um, and, and those are the types of things I'm thinking about in terms of policies of how we have, how do we evaluate if there's enough space? How do we evaluate what the trade-offs are between saying yes or no, or do we have money, et cetera? Yeah, and I think right now we're doing it more of a one-off, I would say. So the, the Caltrans one, for example, that, that Hugh mentioned, you know, because of the fact that we realize that some of the bike, lock, bike racks are not proportionally located. So therefore we came to the commission with an idea of taking, I think we take away maybe one parking space in favor of adding, adding bike racks. So again, it's, it's more of the, the one-off rather than kind of a, a solidified policy, if you will. Um, and and we more than happy to kind of take this offline internally within staff to see what that means, and then we can maybe like report back at the next meeting since we're going to have another one anyways to see what that could potentially look like. I think that would probably be my recommendation. At this I point. think that's a good idea. I especially think with the addition of e-bikes, right, which have a different form factor than the bikes of yore, um, and the popularity of them. I think we're yeah, cargo bikes. I mean, it yeah. would be. It would be interesting to yep. do, I think, as you described, kind of a, an, an audit and evaluation uh, and uh, and create some kind of, you know. Yeah, I think I think that's the first step. I think you're right. It I think it's the first step and I think it's going to get the ball rolling. And if I can just just maybe add one more thing here, which is that I, I think that all makes sense. I guess the way I see this a little bit is like we definitely have limited staff time. And we we do try to install racks, and we can uh, kind of spend time working on getting racks installed, uh, and then sort of look to the future of thinking about evaluating and and understanding what we have and comparing mm -hmm. our existing facilities to standards as a future task. But if we start trying to bring that into this year, that eats into actually getting racks probably installed or or other activities. Like there isn't. From a staff perspective, there isn't a lot of room to for us to think about that. Now, mm -hmm. if the com if the commission or a subcommittee wants to kind of take that offline and sort of think through it and, and do some of the work, but I I worry a little bit. Um, and and you know, Kevin and I can talk about this uh, as he said, kind of offline. But just just to give you a heads up on my thinking, I worry a little bit about like turning this into a bigger thing. Uh, mm -hmm. That sort of kind of gets in the way of making sort of incremental progress, while, and then creating room for it to be a bigger thing in the future. I mean, I appreciate that, Hugh. We could phrase it as something like begin exploration of dot, 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 or begin subcommittee exploration of dot, dot, dot. Um, I have a, a question about the uh, evaluate and confirm the north-south and then the second bullet after that continue to advise the council. I'm just wondering if um, we could potentially broaden the language on both. So evaluate and confirm could it be something like um evaluate the um you know existing bike sorry i'm not going to wordsmith it too much something evaluate and confirm like the existing bike ped network in the city including you know identifying key north south east west corridors or project prioritization i just think that the project itself and again this is subcommittee work Hugh, but um it, it feels like it's not just about confirming corridors, but maybe kind of looking at the network as a whole and what pieces are missing and what gaps might be missing and how it can be marketed better. It seems to be a slightly bigger project than maybe it sounds here, but if I'm wrong or if I'm off base, let's, we can skip it. Right, yeah. So I, I would say that's probably bigger in scale than, okay. than what we are intending here with this. Okay. 
although <clears throat> I think it does lead to ultimately the action that you're speaking of. Sure. It, okay. It's just, it's not coming from this particular exercise. Okay, no problem. Right. The second one here, uh, Middle Avenue. So I wondered if we could, I know we're trying to be really clear with the council, but could we say something like continue to advise the council on um, uh, like major complete streets projects, including Middle Avenue? something where we suggest that it's just more than middle Avenue, partly because I worry that if, when we just put this in there, it sounds like our focus is entirely on a project in district four or five. Um, and I'm sure that in the course of the year, we will be advising the council on projects in other districts that complete street projects that will start to emerge as, you know, start to kind of kick in. Right. So, so I certainly recognize where you're coming from with that uh, recommendation. Uh, the, the only thing I would say to that is, you know, basically the kind of the, the structure of the work plan is is sort of intended to be a okay. little bit more general. And then from that bullet bulletizing specific projects, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't I, I could potentially go back and look at number two and and maybe expand that a little bit more to to be more general, but I would not okay. recommend adding that general language into the second bullet, okay. the, the part about you know other projects, because I do intend those bullets to be very specific. All right, that's fine. I, yeah. I, I, let, I can defer that, no problem. Um, the other question is, is it important to recognize that we as a commission have advised and may potentially continue to advise on um, the quiet zone and Caltrans related projects? Caltrans? Right, Caltrans? so <laughs> yeah, I, I think again, it go, goes back to sort of the, the structure of the work plan it is already inherently okay. part of something that we would continue to update the commission and bring bring any update to the commission on. Uh, again, the bullets are more intended to be something that a subcommittee or one or two okay. commissioners want okay. to take on beyond just your standard review process. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for tolerating my questions. Right. Um, any, so I guess we can move on. If no one else has anything to say about two, I guess we can move on to three. Can I just jump back in? Sorry. Um, yep, sure. uh, Commissioner Sosin, I feel like you had a question that we didn't quite get to, which was about non-bike parking. Um, and, and one thing to know actually is that we, we found out recently that um, we received or we're, we're going to receive a grant from um, the Metropolitan Transportation Commission actually to do a evaluation of our uh, parking as part of sort of housing element implementation related work. Um, and it's uh, kind of a nice grant in that they're going to do the contracting and management of the consultant for it. Um, so uh, it's, it's relatively light lift for staff. Um, and there'll be a lot of it that's kind of data collection and understanding utilization of various uh, facilities. It, it, it'll be kind of at a policy level looking citywide, but a lot of the data will be focused in and around downtown where a lot of the housing uh, development that's in the housing element is anticipated. So we will have more information about that. That's certainly something that like the other things um, uh, Kevin has mentioned, we will be bringing back to, to you all to review as we get uh, data results and, and findings from that. Um, and that certainly can help inform, you know, other kind of future strategies going from there. So just wanted to let you know about that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to make a quick comment um, because it's 8.30 something or other. Oh, wait. Eight, yeah. I don't have a clock. I can actually see 8.33. Anyway, um, I know that we're going to continue talking about this work plan next week. And I also know that there's a quick build of an intersection that we haven't gotten to and a subcommittee discussion that we haven't gotten to. And my question is, do we want to continue diving into, we just have part three left. Do we want to finish up part three and then come back to it next month with all of that stuff done and whatever staff is bringing back? Or do we want to mull over what we have? And um, so I'm just asking for opinions about the next. I have an idea here. Um, is there a subcommittee, for example, our chair and vice chair who could accumulate the input that we've had in this discussion and work offline with staff um, to sort of short circuit this a little bit and then help bring this back next month so that. So what you're saying is take the work we did to go through the work plan and then translate it into subcommittee stuff. Basically assignment? this, take this discussion that we've had. I and, can do that. I'm I mean, raise a hand. maybe, and that, and that way we don't have to so quite so tediously 
wordsmith from the dais. Does someone else want to do? Well, I think uh, actually a slight adjustment. I think that it would be useful to finish the points here, right? Begin and that could inform a subcommittee discussion because we will identify the priorities and take the subcommittee discussion as Commissioner Bruzy suggesting off the agenda for this meeting. I'm fine to spend time working with Kevin. I'd appreciate, I think it would be good to have someone else do it with me, whether that's sure, Jackie yeah. Or, I think that's a useful to have another point of view. Um, so it can be any. any yeah, I was, I was intending to say chair and vice chair. I think that's. Oh, chair and vice chair. I said. I, I oh, sure, say sure. That. sure. I was, okay, I was right. nominating the two of you. Yeah. 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 Okay. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't quite get that. Okay. So yeah, we can work offline and sort of do a straw man for like, okay, given these priorities, the subcommittees could be adjusted this way. And yes. But with that in line, then we can keep our comments more high level um, and less technically detailed, perhaps, to get through it faster. Agreed. I guess I do appreciate when someone like Russ talks about some like like a parking program because then you get a sense of what the subcommittees will be working on and what those assignments might look like. So I do appreciate that. Okay. Um, all right. So so we will move. We will finish this quickly and move on to the Willow um, Alma. Right. Yep. So I think at this point, I think we're pretty clear in terms of uh, one, two, and three, uh, and then I think for. Number four and five and six, um, essentially no no additional uh, edits to them other than the the two sub bullets that we struck out for for number six. So uh, again, kind of focusing on the idea that if we want to create a sub bullet, that generally means there's a subcommittee interested in working on it beyond our standard practice of staff bringing the item to the commission. Um, more than happy to kind of open the conversation up to see if there's any interest. Um, generally, with number four, the I, I, I was going to save this for the um, for the project update, but basically the, the next step for downtown, as you, many of you know, we have that block of Santa Cruz Avenue that's closed. I think the, the idea behind that is we, we're going to try to add a bike lane. Uh, it, it will remain at least the direction that we receive from city council is that it will remain closed, but reconfigure so that we can have a bike lane through that segment. So that would be kind of the next step um, towards that. In terms of what that means for the commission, I think that generally doesn't really, we, we could continue to provide the update on the scheduling, but we do not anticipate to bring that particular item to the commission because other than we're basically gonna try to find some room for a bike lane. Um, so the width of it all is really the only determining factor. Um, what about the zoning changes that I think might be coming to downtown? I think Planning Commission maybe has a meeting coming up where they're going to be discussing that and are there transportation adjacent elements? Right. Yeah. So that would be kind of a Planning Commission effort um, from I think that's land use change. But it, um, I think that has more to, um, I might be kind of need Hugh's help on this, but I believe it has more to do with the land use than... Right. right. But I think they're going to be doing things like, well, I don't know. I haven't actually looked at, I don't think there's a staff report out for it right. yet or anything like that. Um, but typically they might look at things like parking requirements, parking minimums, um, hmm. things so, like that. So a couple, couple sorry, uh, Commissioner Breezy, a couple things to know, I guess, like, I, I don't know the specifics necessarily, but um, what I know at a general level is that um, they are working on bringing forward uh, housing element implementation items. And, and so to the extent they're downtown zoning um, items, those are, are probably related to that. So I'll say that with the like, not 100% sure, but that's would be my guess. Um, and then, uh, yes, there may be some transportation related items. However, um, everything in downtown and everything uh, within a half mile of transit uh, is but you know by state laws now no longer allowed to have parking minimums, uh, so we can't enforce a minimum parking um, anywhere that's within a half mile of transit as a city, um, nor can any jurisdiction in in the state. Um, and so that part you at least don't have to worry about um, in principle. Um, now whether or not that's what actually gets built, you know, uh, is is entirely a different matter. So in the interest of time, I'm happy to rewrite number four um, the way I think it should be. And we can look at it the next in the next month's meeting. But I do find it very puzzling because we're not advising on anything in four. And I think we should be. I think if the council is talking about adding a bike lane on Santa Cruz downtown, whether it's 
I'm not clear whether you're saying it's just where the parklets are. Or it's yeah, it's for the just that for so that that's segment, odd, right? Yeah. Like my my initial yeah. reaction to that is like that's kind of strange. Um, you know, it, is shouldn't that be linking back to a a discussion and strategy around how do you bike down Santa Cruz and downtown? You know, I mean, I, I think this what this the commission is for is to sort of look through the lens of how does this work, you know, for the actual biker um, and how does this work for the pedestrian and is it optimal? And that's what we care about the most. So I think our voices should be in it. So when I look at four, I do feel like we should state that the commission has an advisory role in um, bikeability, walkability of downtown and any plans that affect that. And um, you can, we can add supporting downtown businesses because of course, we would, and the council wants to as well. Mm -hmm. But I think there needs to be a bit of a rewrite to um, define our role as an advisory role here and to define the kinds of issues that we would want to advise on. I, I, yeah, I, I think that's certainly within the um, within the purview of the commission. As I think to write those, um, the, the verb issues, et cetera, I think that's perfectly fine, yeah. Okay. I, I don't have a, an issue with that. I think the... The only thing with the downtown, I, I think that that particular block. I mean, I'm more than happy to kind of talk to the chair and vice chair offline, but um, I'm not sure what what more can be added to that particular effort. I'm not. I wouldn't. I wouldn't change it. I think it's good yeah. they're adding a bike lane, but I don't know what it connects to, and I don't know what the experience is like. I mean, I, I, as you know, I live on Santa Cruz Avenue and I know a lot of bikers <laughs> go flying down the sidewalks um, outside of the businesses, and it's challenging. So. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. I, I completely recognize the kind of the overarching yeah uh, goal of, of the connectivity. Uh, yeah. So it's, I'm just trying to be more clear that this is strictly just that one segment. Yeah, like I do nothing beyond that. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Okay. Um, so with number five and number six, if there's any. I think number five is just kind of that continuing effort that the Safe Route to School Subcommittee will continue to provide uh, assistance to that program. So uh, we do have an item that's potentially coming to the commission September, I think is on our, on, on our target um, for, for that item, so. And then I don't know if there's a desire to um, for the commission right now to think about the those particular items that we have identified. So, for example, the north south corridor. I think that's been traditionally uh, kind of the the TMP's implementation subcommittee's effort. So, continue to be that. Obviously, the safe route to school would be continue to be part of the safe route to school subcommittee. Then the question then becomes the um, that last bullet of um, updating the chance. I'm sorry. Uh, evaluating the driveway stopping site distance. I know that there's um, at least one commissioner interested in doing that kind of effort uh, offline. So if we wanna, if there's a desire to, to assign that to a particular subcommittee in this case, um, or form a new subcommittee, um, if there's more than one interest. If my understanding is correct, I think we took, we decided that we would have Jackie and myself um, take a stab at reassignments and of subcommittees and making sure we have the right subcommittees and then we'll share it for feedback at the next meeting. Oh, um, yeah, sure. That, I'm happy with that. But I just want to make sure that there is more than one commissioner is interested in that. Oh, I see. Yeah, because if it's just one, it's just one. Do you want to reach out to Lisbeth? Maybe she's not going to be I, I, here. I could, could, yeah, I could yeah. try to reach out to him. Yeah. Um, we have two commissioners who aren't, aren't on subcommittees yet. So I wanted to make sure that, I don't think that's necessarily something we should do offline without getting their input first, but I might've misunderstood what was. I didn't mean we would assign the roles. <laughs> okay, I thought we were, I thought we were no, leading. We just, oh, okay, cool. Well, it doesn't seem we can do this in this meeting, right? Talk about subcommittees. Yeah, 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 yeah. We can talk about subcommittees right now, yeah. Oh, we are gonna do that? I thought we took it off the table. We, we won't be able to do any actual assignment but we, I, I want to at least have an idea of the subcommittees that we want to move forward with, because then that will become an actionable item at the next meeting. I'm not sure how we can do the subcommittees without being clearer about our priorities. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah, is my so, take on it, is when, once we get the priorities down, then we say, okay, so almost the subcommittees should be zero-based, right? 
There are mm -hmm. no subcommittees. Uh, no, right. exactly. We'll start over. Totally right, exactly. So for for tonight, at least what what, what I would like would be interested in knowing is whether or not the the driveway guideline would, would, is there more than one commissioner interested in tackling that offline. The guidelines around site distance, right, and parking. Exactly. Okay. I have other things that I want to work on. Okay. Um, so, uh, and if anyone else, if everyone else feels the same, then I think we go to um, Elizabeth. I don't know. Yeah, because if there's no one else, I, I know that Commissioner Almond's interested in doing yeah. doing putting some effort into that. So, if there's just one commissioner, yeah, yeah I was just then, saying, it's just, you know, wait till the priorities are set. Yeah. And then we say, okay, who's interested in what, right? Okay. It, uh, yeah. Otherwise. Otherwise, it's a little bit of a, a, a little yeah. Bit. Well, because at this point, I don't hear anything uh, else new that's going to be added to other than war submitting. I think, I think we need to take a, a beat on the subcommittees. Yeah, right? I would say okay. priorities, like work plan. Yeah. What the subcommittees are, and then who's on what subcommittees. Right. Okay. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So going back to number one. I mean, the staff could also work on it. Might move to a staff thing. Yeah. Well, the council, the council, okay. The council had asked for you guys to work on a poll. Right. So, so, right. So, typically, what would happen is we receive that direction. Staff is going to go offline, work on that policy. Typically, we'll come to the commission with some sort of recommendation. What's, what's, what's inserted in between that is if there's a subcommittee interested, yes. then we will loop that subcommittee in before we bring it to the commission. So with the Safe Route to School subcommittee, they've been looping every step of the way in terms of the process. You, the commission as a whole has not seen anything, right? But the subcommittee has. So that's what I'm talking about. So if there's a desire to be more involved in that, we would be, we'll be more than happy to kind of put that into our own schedule. If not, then the only actionable item would be when staff come to the commission with some type of recommendation. Does that make, hopefully that makes sense. It does. Yeah. I mean, I think there's sort of a fork in the road where this, we could do it that way. The staff could look into it and present it to the whole, sub, whole commission. Or if there was a strong interest on two people's parts to be a subcommittee and work more closely with you before it comes to us, that could happen as well. So that's what's on the table. And exactly. Be ironed out next time. Yeah, because it does. Those subcommittees that could naturally fall out of our priorities, right? Yeah, we're going to yeah. go zero basis. Yeah, we're yeah. going to go boosh, boosh, and mm -hmm. start again. Yeah, because it, it does impact the, the schedule that we have, right? If we have to bring in a subcommittee before we come to the commission, that adds time to the schedule. I mean, that being said, if anyone here before Jackie and I meet with Kevin think, hey, I have a strong opinion that you know, there should be a subcommittee that doesn't exist on this or yeah. send it to us. So one question, one thing I'm not sure in the subcommittee thing, like I'm not, I'm not sure I see it as an offline conversation necessarily. Okay. Like next time we come back, okay, we're coming back to a complete work plan and inside that like more or less complete work plan, I right. think here we can have that conversation about our zero subcommittees and what. Is that what you were thinking about the August meeting? Yeah. Or did you want all that done before we got to the meeting? Uh, that that okay. was um, so oh, I, I um, yeah no I just suggested. thought um, sorry I thought it was just I, yeah. particularly I thought the subcommittee conversation was one that people would want to have of course right. yeah. no definitely I think there's been a misunderstanding yeah. first of all I thought Commissioner Supruzzi was suggesting that's what, that's we go offline that's what I thought you but were saying you all were going to do and I was like wait really oh okay <laughs> okay I let's just back up and say that we'll all work on this in the next meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. So my, my, my goal is that um, definitely open to having additional edits to, at the August meeting, but I would like at the end of the August meeting to be able to approve the work plan. Yep. That's my okay. goal. Right. Sure. Right. I mean, and... It would be. I'm actually in full uh, full disclosure. 
I'm not going to be here for the August meeting. Oh, well, so. maybe we could. What, what is it? The second Wednesday is But what, that doesn't mean that um, I haven't second put Wednesday. all my input That's in and you guys can, the world can move on without me, but. Um, well, hold on. The second Wednesday of August is the 7th. Right, and I believe the chair has already indicated that she would okay. not be able. So can we move it? Is there, I'm so sorry, it's the ninth. Mm -hmm. So um, could everyone make like a different date? Could everyone make the 16th or the 23rd or something? So I, I would need to consult the calendar first. Okay. So if there's a desire to reschedule, I'm more than happy to entertain that, but I would need to go back and, sure. and see what other events we have going on. Absolutely. and provide those available dates I'm for you not, guys. I will say, right, I'm not sure I can do other other dates. It, it turns okay, out so. Wednesdays are really popular. In the, okay, that's okay. Yeah, so we have, okay. we have planning commission on Mondays, today. city council on Tuesdays, right. all the commission meetings on Wednesdays. Thursday, typically we'll have some type of public events and then we try not to have it on Fridays. So really it's a couple, maybe a couple Mondays, a couple of Thursdays, that's probably on the right. table to be, to be completely honest. So, um, well, so, another question yeah. then. Go ahead. Um, is, is establishing the subcommittees necessary to report to the city council on our work plan? No, not necessarily. The work plan okay. itself is more crucial. So I, we, we, can, we can maintain the existing status for the subcommittee. Right. So we could move that to September. Absolutely. But yeah, the, my, my only goal for August would be work plan approved. Okay. Yeah. Seems reasonable. What what does the Brown Act allow us to do in terms of iterating this collectively in a shared experience for the next three or four weeks? Does the Brown Act allow us to like have a a, a shared experience? Uh, no, the Brown Act is very strict about uh, sharing opinions offline. That that could potentially oh. be a quorum violation. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Right. I, I would strongly advise against that. <laughs> yes. We can move on. To yeah, so through the chair, if I may, I, I think I, I'm at a point where I think I'm comfortable yes. with yes, what agree. we want to proceed next. However, I just want to kind of, con before I conclude, make sure that, um, so, so far I'm definitely hearing, you know, some desire to, um, you know, change the verbiage of the mission statement, uh, number four, uh, collectively, but I'm not here. And then, I'm, you know, obviously the edits here are pretty clear already. I'm not hearing any additional sub bullets that need to be added to the work plan, uh, because then the, obviously that has an impact to the subcommittee structure itself. So I just want to make sure that, that I, everyone's in agreement with my statement there. Yeah, okay. I'm sorry, do you mind uh, turning on your mic real quick? So I'm that, sorry, yeah. in my um, thoughts around the rewriting of Bullet point number four, four. Right. I think um, the word parking should probably be in there. Um, That's not as a separate fine. bullet point about a project the way, you know, we were talking about with Commissioner Silverstein, but more because I want to signal that that's something we should be advising on. Okay. Yeah, that's, I think that's fair. Okay. Um, so with that, I think I'm, there's enough direction here that we can uh, go back and I think there's a desire for it the chair and the co-chair or the vice chair to, to work with staff offline on the actual verbiage. Yep. So, so we'll here's my other question about that. Um, uh, I actually have like most of my summer vacations planned over the next three weeks. Got it. So, um, so I'm wondering if, um, Ross or anybody else wants to join Sally and Kevin on sort of wordsmithing this before it comes back to us, uh, not to call you out. <laughs> but I, I, I just am not gonna. I, I think I'm not gonna be able to be abundantly available or a little bit available. I, I would not consider myself a wordsmith. I'm very happy to be involved. Yay! Thank you. Do we need to make a motion to authorize that sort of ad hoc subcommittee-ish thing? Um, I, I think that's for procedurally speaking, that's probably for the best. So okay. if we can have a motion in a second to uh, <laughs> nominate Vice Chair Co and Commissioner Silverstein, I think, and then we we'll I on. would make that motion to nominate Vice Chair Cole and Commissioner Silverstein 
to work together offline with staff to create the draft mission statement and work plan that we can approve next week, next month. Excellent. Can I have a second, please? Uh, I'll second it. Do we need to have um, a public comment for it? We already had a public comment, I believe, so we're good. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, then I second it. Great. Uh, for those that would like to vote yes to that motion, if you can just go ahead and raise your hand. I'm seeing unanimous votes. Great. Thank you very much. So does that mean we are officially finished talking about the work plan today? Yes. Okay. And we can move on to the second one. And I'm going to move to wherever I am in my next. <laughs> Under informational items, city staff provides an update on matters of importance to the commission. Informational items are not action items. However, a commissioner, city staff member, or a member of the public may request to make a comment or ask a question on any of the informational items. The one informational item tonight is confirm proposed pilot quick build intersection improvements at Alma Street and Willow Road. Um, Kevin Chen, senior transportation engineer, can you please introduce this item? Yes, thank you, Madam Chair. If you can give me one second, I'm going to go ahead and I prepare a short presentation. Um, Let's see if it works this time. Oops, sorry. Okay, great, awesome. Uh, I'll try to keep this brief, given the time. Um, as the title suggested, we have a quick bail project that we are presenting in front of the commission tonight. Um, just really trying to keep the commission apprised of some of the activities that we have going on throughout the city. So this is one of them. Hey, it's just a couple of quick slides, uh, some background information, and then the, uh, the evaluation or slash the quick bill option that staff uh, is recommending to move forward with. So in this case, we are examining the location of Elma and Willow Row, uh, as you can see from the exhibit near the Caltrain station, also mm -hmm. has a, a, a pen and bike connection to uh, Palo Alto via the bridge over the San Francisco Creek. Uh, so here's an exhibit of the intersection itself. Uh, the request came in up uh, and, and by request generally staff over the years would receive you know, feedback on particular locations uh, about uh, some of the conditions that people would like to see improve. This is uh, so similar to kind of Menlo University as you guys are, are well aware, you know, certainly not to the extent of that, but this is one other location where we have received in the past uh, desire to kind of improve the area and, um, and sort of multiple uh, re um, unofficial requests. And, and so this is one of those where we are hoping with the availability of the quick build uh, options to, to make some improvements here. So here's an exhibit showing some of the characteristics of the row. Uh, both Willow Row and Elma in this case are 20 miles, 25 miles per hour. The specific conflict that we're interested in, in improving on is the one in front of you, which is where uh, left turning cars coming from Elma turning onto Willow Row. This is heading towards 101 Bayfront, that direction, uh, and conflicting with the pedestrians and, and bikes that are crossing the Elma or the Willow Crosswalk. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, Elma does have the um, the luck, uh, I guess the uh, the benefit of connecting to Palo Alto via the bridge, the pet and bike bridge over the San Francisco Creek. So, in addition to serving sort of the legal the the local uh, neighbors uh, residents, um, it, it also has a, um, a another separate group of users that that goes to Palo Alto. So, this is sort of a, a characteristic that. Perhaps um, you know, unlike some other local streets where you're strictly serving local residents. So in this case, the feedback that we have received is that the the amount of cars that are making that left turn and, and granted with Willow Row, you are also having that additional regional connection to 101 and, and Bayfront. So it does become a fairly attractive route for cars to go through. And later on, you'll see a slide with the volumes that sort of indicated that that scenario. And the, the feedback that we got is that uh, oftentimes those cars would be um, turning and then kind of 
not seeing the the pet and bike that are crossing that crosswalk. So um, essentially, a lot of near misses. With that being said, we did went back and look at the uh, collision record for the last five years. There were two reported uh, collisions. Uh, one of them was a car to car collision, uh, and the, but the other one was uh, this very exact scenario that is being described, where a bicyclist was uh, hit. Luckily, no um, no injury by a vehicle that was making that left turn. Um, so. Uh, here's just a, a quick uh, analysis of the data that's available. So we use uh, streetlight data, what is also uh, more generally known as big data. Uh, it's, it's essentially a collection of cell phone data and uh, aggregate into a little bit more uh, well-defined numbers. So in this case, we were able to use um, the, that account and look at the average uh, car volume between February, March, and April of 2023. And typically with an analysis like this, we would look at Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday and sort of exclude the weekends and, and Monday and Friday, given, given some of the, the characteristics of a fairly standard industry uh, practice. So the volumes that you're, you're seeing are the, the translated volume that we are uh, receiving from, from streetlight data. As you can see, the, the turning that's coming out of that left turn coming out of Elma is, is quite high, disproportionately higher than probably what you would anticipate an intersection like this to be had. And, and again, that has more to do with the, the fact that Willow Road also has the connectivity to 101 and, and to Bayfront. And, and respectively, the, the Willow Road coming on, turning onto Elma, the, the volumes are quite low. Um, and as a result of that, Staff's recommendation is to um, essentially conduct a, uh, a pilot that is similar to what we did with Menlo Avenue, Menlo and University, which is to combine the turn lanes on Willow Row. So in this case, we would reduce the, one of the turn pockets. We would then uh, make, that, make that room into essentially an island in between, in between the two turn, uh, in between the two lanes along Willow Row, uh, also allowing us to kind of shorten the crosswalk distance a little, so it shorten the exposure of a pedestrian or a bicyclist. Uh, in addition, we're going to do some striping to to uh, essentially make the cars come to the intersection a little bit closer before they make that turn. The idea behind that would be to um, hopefully force them to be able to see the pedestrians or a bicyclist before they make that turn uh, and hopefully turn at a slower speed. In this case, we are recommending also post around the, uh, the nose of that yellow island. Uh, again, very similar. This is a fairly common practice. Uh, try to highlight the fact that, you know, there is a median there. So, uh, but also uh, kind of forcing those vehicles not to be able to take that turn uh, too sharp, which generally has to do with the speed of that turn. So with that, I will conclude my presentation and happy to answer any questions. Am I correct in understanding that all of this is attempting to change the angle at which cars are turning. That that is correct. Um, as you actually, as you can see from the uh, the aerial background, you can clearly see how those cars are taking that left turn path. It is quite sharp. Uh, so essentially, the white dot line ideally would be able to kind of force that. Plus the combination of the the dotted line plus the combination of the post, forcing them to the to, to make that turn a little bit wider, which generally means you have to take that a little bit slower. Also, uh, your, eye of, eye, your line of sight would generally be able to kind of see what's coming at you uh, before you complete that turn. So th those are the kind of the benefit that we're hoping the combination of the striping and the post would do. What's happening on the westbound for Willow Road um, before it hits that island? Um, I'm sorry, can you? So there's that middle section there. Yep. Um, that's currently two lanes going westbound on Willow. That's correct. So there's currently, so the, that stretch of Willow Row is basically two lane, one lane each direction plus a yeah. center 10 lane. So, yeah, so yeah. going back to the other slide. Right. Um, as you go down 
west on Willow mm -hmm. between the two yellow lines. Yep. Cars can cars cars can't get in there, right? No. I mean you can physically be there, but there's really no reason for you to be there. Physically, they could be there, though. They could be there, but so you somebody can... could get in there, then try to get, then get to the island, and try to make a right. Yeah, you know, try to get into the lane, right? Yeah, uh, maybe I'm missing. Yeah, I'm not. So I didn't say clearly. Nothing. It's just an island. Yeah, it's just a kind of. Not ballers. Oh, uh, yeah, the red dots are the ballers. The the red dots are the ballers. Yeah, the red circles, that's kind of forming around the nose. Yeah. So you have to maybe Commissioner Allman's point, if you're driving towards Elma, there is, there's really no reason for you to be in that center lane because you can't go through yeah. this ballers. Yeah, if you make a left onto Willow. Oh, right. right. If you make but a, if you're going yeah. west on Willow, if okay. you're going west on Willow, yeah. you're going up, basically up. Right. Yeah. Can you get in that to that yellow section? In the middle, well, you, could you, you could, but but you have to go back eventually. Well, it's a middle. You could do that to allow space for bikes, but there's really no purpose for someone to get into that that center lane, right? Except to turn into the except for except to, except to turn into the driveway. If you want to turn into the driveway, but right. there's no right. yeah. If you want to continue to make a turn on Elma, there's no point in being there. And most people. Most well, people are turning yeah, right. Theoretically, yeah. you could go down left and stop there right at the island, you know, the, the check spot, and then try to make it right onto the, you see, you know, go up here and then try to get across. But why? Will that yellow striping allow for people to turn left into the driveway inside that big yellow island? Uh, yeah, so directionality-wise, if you're south of the crosswalk, there's nothing blocking you. So technically speaking, you... So if you want to say if you're driving from 101, you want to make a left onto that driveway that's to to the left of it. You, you could just go into the center lane and then make a left turn. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that they weren't striped like those lines. You're you're supposed to treat like an island, and so I wanted to make sure that it was not like that. Right. So in this case, it would be a what we call what we call a two way, uh, two two way left turn center line. So you know it's very common. Oh, yeah. So I, I have a couple questions on that left turn. Um, I guess, is there a reason why there are no posts on Alma Street extending out to ensure that no one's cutting that corner? Mm -hmm. And then is there a reason why there isn't an actual stop sign or speed bump? Is that because this is a quick fix and not an actual permanent solution? Or was that rejected as a proposal in the first place? Right, so in this case, uh, we, we do have speed humps along Alma. Um, they're more in the form of a race, almost like a speed table than a speed hum. So we do have those. In this case, Elma, we, we are currently not recommending a, a stop sign on Elma, although if that's if the desire to look into that, we, we certainly could. But given kind of the characteristic of the roadway, I think making sure that those left turning cars are um, you know, turning slow enough, being able to see what's coming, um, those are, in our opinion, those will be beneficial enough to, to kind of hopefully alleviate the situation. Yeah. Okay, that's a high traffic area because cars rise pedestrians. Mm -hmm. uh, motor scooters, bikes, 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 bikes. Uh, we, we can certainly evaluate that. Um, generally with the Alma, with the Alma, there's we, we currently have uh, I, th I think so we recently completed the first batch of always stuff. I think that came to the commission a while ago. We do have right now a second batch of uh, locations where we received a request and we're currently evaluating. If the desire from the commission to kind of add this location to that list, more than happy to do so. Um, just kind of given some of the criteria that we have identified through the first batch, we're not sure this location necessarily meet, would meet that criteria because it, it does have a disproportional amount of left turning cars. But at the end of the day, the volumes are still relatively low, um, and so are the pedestrians and bikes. So there's a kind of a threshold that we typically would like to be able to kind of meet. Um, in this case, you know, the conflict is there, recognizing that, but the volumes, relatively speaking, are still relatively low. If you guys don't think that it warrants a stop sign, then I'm not to say otherwise, but I, I would... Uh, 
love to see exploring putting those bollards mm -hmm. on those on Alma itself in between the two lanes in order to prevent anyone from cutting that corner quickly. Um, so you have it on Willow right. to prevent someone from really cutting it. Yes. But ensuring that those cars basically extend out into the intersection as much as possible before taking a sharp left turn. Right. Um, having a baller there would be I useful. see. So a baller on Elma. Yeah, in, in between the double in yellow. In between the double yellow. Yeah. That's uh, certainly something we can, yeah, we can add that into the design. Yes. I think that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Well, because I, I think one of my questions was like, I, I see how changing the angle, like, hopefully could make an effect but there's not really any substantial change on behalf of the bikers in that like for for bicyclists it's hard to see there shouldn't be a change bikes have the right of way because they're going straight and they're not right turning. right but in the the way it is right now like the only two accidents we have are one with a bike and a car which this might solve but there's no direct thing that would make this solve for that right because there's no right except a stop sign because the bikes are still going to go straight through but now the cars are hopefully slowing down enough that they're not just like going on an auto like freeway exit space right can't go anywhere else. right so that's we're counting on the the tightness of the intersection to make them just more alert yeah i mean i, I will say Much more slowly really yeah. right angle intersections work and to, to slow cars down and those like very wide turns will speed up cars for sure i think if nothing else having additional stuff there in the intersection will habituate people who are using it to pay a little more attention it's kind of like oh there's something here I and mean, my biggest issue is that this used to be my route home every day on my bike and it was always really terrifying because you didn't know whether the driver that you saw was actually going to turn or not a lot of them don't even use their turn signals um, and so you're sort of like waving as you're biking forward, like, hi, see me, I'm here. Um, and, uh, maybe just having a few more visual cues in that area, like bollards that say, this is kind of an area where you have to be a little more careful will help with that. Yeah. I, I think commissioner Silverstein's, um, Silverstein's, um, recommendation to add bollards on Alma. I think that's definitely something we can incorporate into. <laughs> yes actually speaking as a cyclist i don't love the idea of putting a stop sign here oh. i think a lot of cyclists enjoy the ability to ride without i mean it's like bryant and palo alto it's really nice to have a place where you can ride for more than on a non-heavy traffic street for more than like two blocks without having to stop and start again um and i also think cyclists might not observe the stop sign and that even adds more confusion for drivers. So if it's not warranted, I support not doing it. I don't think stop signs for traffic calming really work that well. And then Kevin, for the biker on Willow, who's gonna turn left on Alma, is that is the current kind of bike lane sufficient in terms of, are they gonna get into the car lane to then make that left turn in order to make sure that a car turning right isn't, conflicting them yeah yeah I, I think certainly that's that would probably be more the experience or the confidence of the biker rather than um so in, in this case I, I would say you know if you're more experienced confidence you probably would take the lane uh, and then make sure that there's no oncoming cars before you proceed um for someone that is probably less experienced i would presume that they would kind of stick in onto the bike lane and then cross and then proceed to the bike uh Hang on, Alma. Okay, this is a dumb question, but yeah. is there a scenario in which it could be not an always stop, but a two out of three way stop? Where would that second stop be? The 1500 car is turning left. But we only have could, one lane, so we can't, we can't. Um, right, but. Okay. So essentially stop would be from the, uh, for the, for the we left We have direction. weird places like that in the city. I think there's like one in the willows where it, every every leg of the intersection doesn't have a stop sign um we, we do and we actually 
mitigated that because it yeah, was creating a lot of crazy. confusion. Okay, never mind. Strike yeah. that from the record. Yeah, we, we actually <laughs> added stop sign. I know exactly the, the two locations you're talking about and we added stop sign because we were getting a lot of confusion. Do yeah. we ever have a sign that just says left turn yield to bikes and pads? We can definitely add this. We do have, we have a sign that says yield to pet and bike, but it was more focused on the left, the right turn rather mm -hmm. than left turn. But I, I can explore mm -hmm. a, a sign that kind of similar in nature, right? Turning right. yield to, you know, pet yeah. and bike. Like we, we, we can look into that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would assume you're talking about for the cars that are on exactly. Elma, right? Yep. yep. Well, I'd be ready to make a motion. Was uh, this a motion? Don't, don't need a motion. No motion. Yeah, we're okay. just collecting Thank feedback. You. That's it. Yeah. Uh, so if there's no more feedback, then we can close the item. Any clarifying questions from the commissioner before I take public comment? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Kevin, you want to call for public comment, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. Just give me one second. Okay. It's the same person. Um, so just basically for everyone's benefit, if you are attending via virtually, please go ahead and engage the raise hand. If you're calling via uh, from a landline or cell phone, press nine to raise your virtual hand. Uh, if you're participating in person, wait for your name to be called. Um, not seeing a hand raise, so I think we can uh, close the common public comment period. Okay, and we... Oh, I turned it off. We're update on major project status now. Yes, great. Thank you, Madam Chair. So a few projects that I would like to update the commission on um, Coleman Ringwood study. Uh, so hopefully some of you completed the survey. So right now the um, consulting team is working on compiling the survey results offline. Um, and then eventually that particular item will be coming to the commission as well. I think we're aiming for August, if I remember correctly. Um, sorry, Commissioner. Apropos of that particular thing, there's a, there's a task force meeting coming up that's been scheduled that I definitely can't make because I'm on vacation. Okay. And I think my designated alternate, Jackie, Jackie um, might also be on vacation, or are you? No, because she's, she Great. sent me a doodle poll because you're out of town. Oh my gosh, it worked. Okay, it worked. Great. And uh, I doodled that I'm available a different day. Never mind so. then. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks. So we right. I was going to see covering. if we needed a second alternate. Okay. Great. Awesome. The, the quiet zone, we were able to release the design RFP. So um, yay to the to the design team there. Uh, so hopefully we'll, we'll get some good bits and then um, proceed with the design. Local safety plans, we did talk about that a little bit. Uh, as Vice Chair Cole mentioned, there will be a, um, there's a stakeholder meeting tomorrow. So hopefully she can provide some update at the next meeting. Um, but, but yeah, so for that. Um, shuttle program evaluation, we, uh, as many of you know, there have been kind of a study, uh, kind of a CDY uh, study for the shuttle program. For the, within the next couple months or so, there should be a survey and some community events that, that will be coming out of that effort as well. So uh, again, I'll, I'll make sure to update the commission whenever those dates become available. And then I talk about downtown already, so that's it. That's my status update. Thank you. I have one thing. Sorry. Um, Kevin, I think after the last meeting, I think you and I had a quick call, talked about the bundled voting procedure that, that happened in the last meeting and why we might take the different items apart and vote on them separately next time. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> th th kind of a, just a quick touch up on on the item that we had last last at the last meeting. Um, I, I think generally there was a, a really fruitful conversation about uh, well, taking step backs. There was a parking removal item for the for the for the three three locations. If you recall, two on Valparaiso, one on Campbell, um, and then there was ultimately a the um, a decision to to basically uh, vote upon uh, with staff's recommendation. So couple of points I just wanted to kind of quickly highlight is definitely appreciate the conversation that the, that the commission had. And, and I know that at, the, at some point there was a kind of a difference in an opinion 
on on how to proceed with one of the locations. And I definitely kind of understanding that you know that sometimes those conversations might be uncomfortable. But I definitely encourage uh, for any of you that that you know share a, an opinion about a project to definitely be voicing them. Um, and and so that way we can again going back to Commissioner Altman's. Um, ask about how how to best evaluate or how is how is the commission doing i think voicing your opinion um even if it's not the majority definitely would be would be appreciated here and then in terms of the voting i think we ultimately voted one i think one item for i'm um, sorry one motion for all three but probably what we should have done is maybe pull that out um voted on them separately because the the only two dissension was really on Campbell and not necessarily in Valparaiso. So those would be um, things that we want to correct um, more on my end, to be honest, uh, for the future reference. I just want to be clear. Clear, yeah. I wasn't criticizing Kevin at all, oh, yeah. but um, no. we were just kind of like sorting it out a bit in our yeah. heads, like the day after we're like, what happened? And could that vote been a different way in, in regard to the fact that I was saying, well, I really supported the Valpo <laughs> parking removal. But then when the vote came up, I was a bit stymied because I thought I don't want to vote down on, on all of these, but I don't have a choice because it's bundled. So the only the only feedback I had was that it had been unbundled. Exactly. Then, you know, we could express our different opinions and different items a little better. But um, I guess I just want to also add for my own part now that I'm thinking about that uh, conversation again, that um, I, I definitely reflected on it and I appreciate the other commissioner's point of view that it was a Campbell was a place where, you know, there were large vehicles and not a lot of other people parking. So it didn't, uh, it wasn't seemed material to not provide, uh, to remove all the spaces that were requested to be removed. And I just want to folks to know where I was coming from, which was, I guess I want, um, for my own part to be careful and, and thoughtful and make sure that every parking removal we do is really warranted. And in that case, it just didn't seem visually as much to me. But the other thing is I definitely a believer in the Kind of measure twice, cut once, and while there may not be a lot of people parking demand on that street in the future, I mean, right now there might be in the future. And I just wanted to um, emphasize. I guess I'm always thinking about a decision that's sustainable and that doesn't get questioned and that just lasts for a long, long time. Um, so that's where I was coming from that day. But um, thank you, Kevin. I think it's it's good to talk about procedure with the group and if unbundling it might have been able to, you know, express different opinions and different items that would be fruitful, I think. That's up. Yeah, and for everyone's benefit, that's a, a very um, common practice. City Council often will separate items and, and vote them independently because of that, for that very reason. Mm -hmm. Okay, do we um, call for public comment on this or are we? Yeah, I think we can skip that. Okay. Okay. Um, and then uh, are there any subcommittee reports or updates? Well, there are still, <laughs> there will not be any in a, like a minute and a half. <laughs> um, and uh, since we have no sub. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. Well, and I'm going to uh, adjourn the meeting. Thanks everybody. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. <laughs>